Hey guys, we are back. We are back for another episode of Interstage Window. I'm getting really good at saying the name, aren't I? <laughs> um, and and here with me, here with me as usual is Landon. Say hi, Landon. Hi, Landon. The omniscient <laughs> voice in the background. Hey, Naomi. Um, also, guess who's back? Back, back again. again. <laughs> yeah. Sasha's back. Sasha's back. Tell a friend. Tell a friend. <laughs> <laughs> hey bye <laughs> yes it's the it's your favorite monster from under the bed sasha well i figured like um you know it was your just such a problematic fave sasha it was such an appropriate song it was such an appropriate song for today and for sasha so i had to start off with that right um because <laughs> it feels so empty without you sasha it really does but uh, but you're back <laughs> This looks like a job for me. <laughs> <laughs> so don't forget to follow me. Uh, links down below. Click the little heart, guys, if you're watching this and you haven't followed the stream yet. Um, thanks for the setup. <laughs> okay, so uh, today, today we are going to be talking about um, Andes. If you don't know what that is, don't worry. We're going to do a little definition for you. And this is really going to be a case study. This is really going to be a case study. Sasha's going to be sharing a story with us that happened to her. Um, I was there, so I will also be talking a little bit about my experiences with that story. And um, and Landon is is going to be here to support us. She's going to to moderate for us and help us fill in the the pieces um, that we maybe forget to tell because of course this is a live show, right? So we can't go back. <laughs> um, so before we actually get started, before we do anything else, I want to make a few announcements that I feel like uh, they need to come from me, right? As the the ultimate like the owner of the stream, right? So the point is in this case study not to out anyone. Right. Like um, the point is really to spread awareness about aunties and some of the things that they they do. And my hope from this is that if you guys ever find yourself in this situation or you find yourself having these thoughts that this particular person had that led to them doing these behaviors, that you will have some more tools to know what to do. Uh, so because the point is not to out anyone, I just want to make it super, super clear uh, some of you guys were there during this and you know who we're going to talk about. Do not, under any circumstances, share who this person is. Don't share any details that we're not already sharing here, right? Um, just really serious. Be real serious for a second. I will ban you if you do this. Don't do it. Don't put it in the chat here live. Don't put it in the comments below the VOD. I don't want to see it. All right. I don't want to see it. That's not what we're about today. This person that did this, even though they did an awful thing, they don't deserve that. Um, okay, I'm not being super serious anymore, but I do have one other thing I want to say. Uh, Sasha's being really, really brave, sharing her story with us today. And I just hope that you guys will show her the grace and the kindness that you would want to be shown to you if you were sharing a really sensitive story. So please do that for me. I would really, really appreciate it. Um, that's it. That's it. That's all like the soapboxy things I wanted to say. Okay. We can actually get started with some stuff with the show now. Um, is there anything you guys wanted to say before we, before we kind of, uh, go do favorite things? I don't think so. I think you pretty much said it all well. Okay. And, um, yeah, the, just. The... Oh, ahead, am I talking? Okay. Yeah, oh, go for it. We go. I, I can't hear my feedback anymore. In the words of Jeb Bush, please clap. <laughs> <laughs> yes no the controller got disconnected okay well um while i am fixing the controller real quick uh landon why don't you share with us your favorite thing i forgot that we do this every week and you prepped me this week for this <laughs> uh let me think of a favorite thing very quickly we'll go with um you know what campfires uh now is the perfect time of year here in new england to have campfires because autumn is awesome and i know i talked about it a little bit last week but um did i cut out can you hear me still i'm gonna assume yes and i'm gonna keep talking Hmm. Uh, <laughs> oh, I couldn't hear you. I had to take the headphones out to get around to the tower. Sorry. Oh, okay. No, Welcome, you're Boba. <laughs> Haven't seen you before, but so so happy to have you with us today. I uh, I heard the disconnected voice, and I was like, oh, I'm using a different thing to record, and I was like, no, did it disconnect me? Anyway, <laughs> campfires 
are amazing. And um, I grew up in Colorado where it is a desert. People don't think of Colorado as a desert. And I couldn't ever have campfires. Like even camping, it was like sometimes during the summer months, you couldn't even have a fire when camping. It was too dry? And so now that I live in a state, yeah, because it's too dry. As soon as if there was any fire that caught anything, there could be a massive forest fire, which there is right now actually in Estes Park in Colorado, which is where I used to go camping. Um, giant fire fire giant forest fires happen all the time in Colorado. So you couldn't have, you know, you couldn't have campfires, let alone backyard fires. And I now live in a state where like, if you own a house, you also own a fire pit and then just have fires at night. And it is the coolest thing ever. And I love it so much. That's my favorite thing. <laughs> oh, I love that. I guess I don't know how that is. Cause you know, as you know, I live in the swamp, right? So um, mm. I can't understand. Uh, we have the, we don't have to worry about that. Not really. It's pretty rare that we have an issue with uh, wildfires. So that's awesome. I also love campfires. I think they're great. And s'mores are, I don't even actually, I lied. I was going to say s'mores are the superior dessert, but they're not. Just the marshmallows is the superior de- dessert. <laughs> and the correct way to eat them is to burn it, peel off the skin, and then repeat until you have no marshmallow left. Just saying. Mm, mm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's an interesting tactic. Um, I'm not a huge fan of marshmallows, so I can't really comment. So sorry. <laughs> I shake my head in disappointment, Karen. I understand. Um, just it's not my thing, you know. But I love the chocolate and graham cracker. I'll still eat a s'more because you know I love all the other stuff around it, and it's fun okay, to roast the-, the marshmallows. <laughs> here's the thing: you can have my graham cracker and chocolate, and I'll just eat the marshmallow. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sound good? Perfect. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, Sasha, Sasha, what's your favorite thing? For fall? Sure. For in generally. Or oh. for fall. <laughs> oh, you were talking about campfires that seemed like fall-esque. I mean, my, my current favorite thing is I'm like the chaotic randomness of life and the people that you meet in Los Angeles where you're just like, I've done it. I have exited real life and entered an alternate movie universe where weird things happen but uh my favorite fall thing is apple picking i went apple picking on sunday and uh spent three hours making a pie as i hand sliced four and a half pounds of apples oh my my gosh that sounds insane It, it it was insane it felt insane, but I I did it. I have I've done the fall thing. Mission accomplished. I love it. That sounds great. Um, so I'll go ahead and, and say for me, so we can kind of get through the favorite things because I know we have a lot to go into today. But um, I don't actually have a favorite thing this week. But I wanted to use this time to say something that I that is very important to me that I I think that you guys should all be taking into account. So not a favorite thing, but definitely a fall thing. Um, please go vote. Okay, please go vote. 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 Please go vote. If you've not voted yet, go vote. Um, It's it's important, okay? I don't want to get too into too many details, right? Because I don't like it to get uh, too specifics with my specific with my politics on here. But um, what I will say is that my curious cat is open on my Twitter. So if you would like me to clarify uh, how I feel about electoralism and voting and like all of that good stuff, you're more than welcome to send me a curious cat. But, um, but yeah, like, please, please just go freaking vote. Like, just go freaking vote. Like, regardless of how you feel about it, just please do it for me. Okay. At least for me. (laughs) If you are in America, it is your civic duty to do so. Yeah, please, please. It's the least you can do. Um, so that's it. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't have a favorite thing. I don't have a favorite thing. Um, of course voting isn't fun, but please go vote. That's it. That's what I wanted to say. <laughs> I love it. I think, and no. you know what? Vote early. Here's the thing, too. Vote early. There's yeah. huge ass lines on the third, guys. So yep. might as well just go to the post office, pick up a, ba- a ballot, and drop it in there. Yep. And if you can't vote early for any reason, um, log into your work thing that you have on your computer. I'm sure we all have them now, um, you know, especially with COVID going on. Put in your PTO for Tuesday. Okay, go put in your they, PTO for Tuesday so that you can do it. You can vote on Tuesday um, if you can't do it early. they have to give it to you. It's yes. actually a law that they have to give it to you to in, go vote. In, mo- wait, in most states. That's not true in, in every state. states. But in most okay. states, they okay. do have to give it to you. Um, so, yeah, go do it right now. If you've forgotten, go do it right now. Like, you can come back to the stream later. I'm fine with that. Right? <laughs> <laughs> or just log in on the stream on your phone while you go do that. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. 
Um, so that's that's what I wanted to share during during favorite things this week. I love it. Thank you. All right, shall we get into the thick of it then? Yes. Yeah. Let's get into the thick of it. Um, so what I wanted to do first here today is take a moment to define what an auntie is. So before we get into the actual story, which I know that's what most of you guys are here for, um, I want to make sure that everyone watching understands like what we're talking about. Because if you've not encountered this before, it might be a little bit confusing. So essentially what an auntie is, is it's short for auntie shipper. So I'm going to give you all a little bit of the history of this right now. Um, this was something that was happening in fandom for a long time before this. However, it didn't really get to be a thing until Tumblr. And the reason why is because on Tumblr, instead of having communities, you know, like you have Facebook groups or like back in the day on LiveJournal, you had communities. So instead of having that, what you had was tags. So you would post in a tag and anyone could see it like it wasn't closed off you didn't have to opt into the tag like it just it just sort of happened and it was all out there sorry my neighbor decided to mow their lawn so i'm sorry if y'all can hear that too much good morning <laughs> yes um but uh but so what people would do is they would say okay well it's rude like say you wanted to post about um supernatural ships right like you wanted to post like i hate wincest in the supernatural fandom right it sounds like spooky sound effects. Oh, okay, well, there we go. That's perfect. Um, so you wanted to post about that, but you wanted to post about how much you don't like it. Well, it's kind of rude to put it in that tag when you're saying, you know, I hate this. Because, like, think about it. You're going to post it, and all the people that like that ship are going to see it, and then they're going to be mad at you, and da-da-da-da-da. So what, they, what people would do, what they, people would do is they would post, like, anti-wincest, right? And they would give their, their take about how much they hate the ship. All right, so cool, cool so far. That worked for a little while. Unfortunately, what that meant is because it was all public and it was grouped by tags instead of in private communities that you had to opt into, it made it easier for haters to find each other and kind of, you know, put their all of them together, right? In a way in a way that was very simple because you weren't opting into like seeing this this fandom wank, you were just seeing it. Um, and it also made it easy for bad actors to stir up those haters, which we'll, we'll get into um, after, uh, in a little bit later in the definition. But um, Landon, if you could take that, that link, or Sasha, whoever, or both, whatever, who wants to do it, um, take that link that I posted in, in the, the stream uh, chat in Discord and put it in the actual Twitch stream chat. This is proof. It. Thank you. Um, this is proof about how turfs... Too slow. Oh, <laughs> Sasha beat you. Um, this is proof about how, like, turfs went and infiltrated anti-communities and, like, made them even way worse, right? So you end up getting, like, all of these hateful people uh, coming in and, and causing these these issues in, in communities where they're basically, like, just, like, hating on a ship, right? So that's the history of it. That's, like, how this came to be. So, um, so I've been talking for a few minutes. So, uh, so Sasha or Landon, whoever wants to take this next piece, um, can you explain what the basic logic of an anti is? Like, what an anti shipper is really in the background <sighs> thinking? You want that, Sasha? Yeah. Uh, yes. <laughs> can oh I boy. Very, can I say something very sure. quickly before? Yeah, yeah. Go for it. I just wanted to say that I don't think that there is anything wrong with how things started. That if you wanted to post anti-ship stuff on your personal blog, I don't think that there is a problem with that. If you do not like a ship, I don't think there is a problem with that. What yeah. the problem became is when everything grew together. Yeah. It's, also, it's... I am of the mind of ship and let ship. Like, whatever, whatever you like doesn't really affect me. But I understand where an online world why that would become a thing and why something you feel like you'd want to do absolutely like the history is not a problem like how it started is not a problem it's what bad actors saw going on and then went and took advantage of to create problems yeah exactly yeah all right sasha go on into bad logic or to the basic logic <laughs> okay um oh god i've thought about this so much you guys you know this though <laughs> so Essentially, the core thought of the anti-shippers is that 
if you read or consume or create fictional content, then you are by extension endorsing it. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, the, the basic roots of this comes from like absolutely, uh, bastardized media arguments. Cause I'm sure, you know, like you, you see arguments about like feminism, right. And about like, Oh, like women are always treated like side characters or like highly sexualized or demeaned. And this is an intersection and overlap of of misogyny that influences it so anti-shippers are kind of f familiar with the basic logic of that argument but they take it a step further and are like this is this is an endorsement or, slash it is creating an endorsement people who read your content that contains these things will take it as an endorsement so by consuming this you are endorsed it and by creating it you're creating an endorsement that is going to encourage people to do and believe these things mm -hmm. yeah exactly yeah i would say that basically <laughs> is it it's like a it's like a a shipper version of video games cause violence right it's like a fandom version of that uh and and that's essentially what they're saying they're saying if you consume or create problematic content or enjoy problematic content, then you will go do these things in real life. You will endorse these things in real life. Uh, yeah, I, I miss the good old days of don't like, don't read very, very much. That's not how it is anymore. And from the history that we talked about, I think you can probably put two and two together that I fully blame um, the way that social media works nowadays. Like that, those two things, those two things, uh, the way social media works nowadays and, um, it has like been fully taken advantage by hateful groups and hateful people um but yeah essentially it's video games cause violence but for you know for shippers i think ooh, ooh i just i want to go off on a little bit of a point there too yeah you, you mentioned uh social media so like also one of the things that kind of overlaps with the rise of the anti-movement is the rise of the single online identity movement kind of back in my day to, to date myself, which is going to be, I start getting online in like the early 2000s. Mm -hmm. So like 2001 um, is the, was the concept of the internet as a separate experimental space that you kept uh, like gated off from the rest of your life. Whereas the antis kind of rise up into cultural relevance in our circles in the days of Facebook, where Facebook is like, you have one identity, it needs, it needs to be merged with your offline identity. And like, there is no separation. There is only the one you. Yep. No, I think that's very true because back in the day on the internet, if you got yourself in trouble um, or you like you you screwed up your friendships or whatever, you basically just deleted your username and started over and tried to do better next time. And that's impossible now. You can't do yeah. that anymore. You, you can, but, you know, everything is all about longevity, yep. quote, authenticity, unquote, it's hard. brand. Yeah. Like, if you are people get so like possessive over the brand over what they have built that people don't want to give it up yep like there is this idea that the more followers you have or the more people that care about you online means that you're more important mm -hmm. and so there is a lot of people who sit there and go i have a tumblr blog that 1200 people follow me on i i couldn't imagine deleting this and having yep. to start over because then people wouldn't wouldn't care about me and therefore i wouldn't matter Yep. I have no validity under capitalism, Landon. So followers <laughs> are, very, are very important, especially if I have vivid fantasies about being able to leverage them into a life where I am not a wage slave. So, you know, I don't yeah. think the antis are, are consciously thinking that, but that's the the undercurrent. Yeah, no, yeah, I don't think, and I don't think that is just an anti thing. I think that is a thing that is happening mm -hmm. now to everyone yes. who exists online. It's that, I mean, there are studies being shown that, you know, people get addicted to the idea of likes and reblogs mm -hmm. and that, that the endorphins that you receive from, from these like ups and these likes are the same to, are akin to like in life kudos. Yeah, absolutely. And we're becoming addicted to this constant need of it, this constant people pleasing 
that that is what our generation and what our world is built around right now. That it that of course seeps into the antis, um, but it's not the it is not their foundation, but it is part of that. But it's also part of everything. Well, a lot of antis are also very young, right? So they they have been they have been implicitly taught a lot of this stuff, and and they don't know what the internet used to be like. Right. So they so there's a lot of lost perspective there, which is exactly why bad actors are able to come in and take advantage. Right. Because it is mostly like the truth is it is mostly teenagers and younger 20 somethings, you know, that don't necessarily know. Um, I, go ahead. Do you still think so? Yeah. Yeah. OK. I do. I mean, obviously, I, I have very little insight into it because it did not affect me nearly as much. But a part of me wonders is as we grow and we age if the demographic if you grow out of the demographic or is the demographic age expand yeah i mean maybe i don't know it's hard to say i know that most um older aunties that i have seen aren't are, are like usually aunties and something else right like they're they're actually they're turfs and they're taking advantage of they're, a lot yeah, of anti stuff or they're, yeah they're or they're <laughs> right or they're or they're bigoted in some way and they're taking advantage of anti arguments to further their bigotry right that's typically gotcha. what i see with an older auntie whereas i younger aunties tend to be like you know hyper woke and think that they're helping out their you know dis disadvantaged friends and uh and you know and peers online um you know that's that's what I yeah. tend to see. I don't know. I've not gone and like interviewed a bunch of aunties, right? I just I'm like mm -hmm. I'm I'm talking about what I passively have consumed. Absolutely. I so. agree with that. Yeah. Um I think it's also important to uh talk about because we kind of just mentioned it, who aunties like grab onto. Yeah. The micro identities. Yeah, like, like aunties do tend to hate certain other groups too. Like you typically an auntie will also really hate micro identities like they'll say things like uh, he him lesbians is a good example so they'll say things like he him lesbians are hurting all lesbians because lesbianism is about you know loving women and and they bring masculinity into it and da 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 da, da and that that means that lesbians are less legitimate and people won't take us serious and you he him lesbians you're the reason that that uh, anti-gay people exist and it's just bullcrap. Um, <laughs> but they, they, and other ones too that they tend to attack, they tend to attack um, older women. Like the, the way that you'll see them attacking older women is they believe that like everybody that's a, that's a Fujoshi or everybody that consumes yaoi content is like an old cishet white woman, right? And that's not true. Like if you actually consume this content and have been in these communities, you know that there are a lot of queer people in these communities and there are men in these communities too. Um, but they, aunties will spread around things like, oh, all Fujoshis are cishet older white women and they're hurting the poor, defenseless Japanese gays, right? Okay, it's, you know it's what? crazy. It's, it's funny you should mention that because, um, as you know, I'm a, I'm a critical thinking person. So this <laughs> actually means that for years I've been consuming like the arguments, things that I do, you know, like I said, I'm a long time problematic fave here. <laughs> and um, I've written some publicly, formerly publicly available um, spice. And so I would actually go out of my way to like read kind of the counter arguments on the off chance that I ever encountered one. I never actually did, but I can, I had a flashback to like a live journal article. It was a live journal post. That's how, that's how old this was. It was a live journal post complaining about the Fujoshis and their misrepresentation of gay sex, of, you know, anal sex and it, and it's, and it's great harms. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and so so i get, think that brings up a good point is a lot of these like these anti-points and these anti like ideas like they existed long before but the anti-movement wasn't able to get started until the internet shifted from community-based to tag-based so this stuff always existed out here in in you know woke circles right um, it's not new. It wasn't new ideas that Tumblrites came up with, right? It's just that the the style of social media changed, and therefore they were able to change, like to instead of just talking amongst each other about this stuff, to actually go out and attack people, right? And I think that that's that's the thing. That's the thing that's happening in the anti movement, 
now that makes this topic so important to me and why I feel like it's very important that we talk about it is they don't just sit around crying about you know how this artist is hurting this group or that group or whatever like they go out and they find artists and fanfic writers and uh, and creators online and harass them like literally yep. like one one artist i remember a, a one story um that was like with the very first like uh, crazy anti story i ever heard where this artist was at a convention and they were given cookies by a fan this wasn't a fan this was an anti hater that thought they were evil for the ships and the art that they made, and they gave them cookies with needles in them. This is not a joke. Like, they, they, this happened, right? Um, it's awful. It's awful. And that would have never Good happened in the Halloween story. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then that would have never happened when things were in communities and they weren't just everywhere and they couldn't become like these movements, right? So. But, but also, not just that, it, it makes me think, like, for example, like, um, the worst the worst of anonymity where like on live journal there was no function for you to anonymously message somebody right if you wanted to be a shithead you had to actually at least take the time to make a sock account mm -hmm. which i it's think an effort <laughs> while while a small barrier you know any kind of speed bump i think does help with people being like hmm maybe i am being a crazy person or at least it it like defends against really raw impulses mm -hmm. like yeah it means there's it, multiple it means steps it not worth it. <laughs> you know just it's harder like you know what it's like um god uh it's extreme analogy but they this is why like um there's warnings that they really warn against any kind of mentally ill or unstable person having a gun in the house because suicidal ideation tends to be like intense suicidal ideation tends to be a short-lived thing you're having a bad day you're, you're in a despairing moment you're impulsive well, yep. you and then you take a nap take, and then you feel better right <laughs> yeah if you, if, you, but if you impulsively take a bunch of tylenol your chances of living are really high if you impulsively get the gun out of your gun safe your chances of surviving that are extremely low guns are like the yeah. most effective mm -hmm. method so same with like impulsive anonymous ask like it's just right there it's just you hit it you're in a you're having a bad moment you just click on the box and you can send that off and then of course you get that little cathartic hit of rage and thus the addictive cycle begins. well and then well and then especially if you see that person react to it mm -hmm. which is something that is very commonly that happens especially when you have an an um anons in tumblr realm that you get something negative and that you you know you get that angry you have that same rush of emotion you respond to it the person who originally sent it is now not only addicted to like, like that sending it, I affected you, but I affected you so much that you responded to me. Mm -hmm. You're paying attention to me, which is also a huge part of it. Yep, absolutely. Um, and so I think w something that I forgot to say in, in my, you know, little PSAs is, is uh, we are probably going to get into some really sensitive stuff. So I don't blame anyone if you are listening right now and you have to close the stream because we, we say some things that are just like, wow, super out there. Um, this, this story does get a little intense. We've taken some of the teeth out of it, you know, um, for what we're going to talk about in our little case study today when Sasha shares her story. But, um, but there is still some upsetting things. So I totally understand. So consider this your content warning. Um, same thing if you're watching the VODs. Like, if you got to close out in the middle of it, like, I don't feel bad about that. You are perfectly okay to do so. Um, I just wanted to say that as an aside. I probably should have said that at the beginning. So, but better late than never, right? I agree. Yeah. Um, we should discuss very quickly before moving on to the story um, about how aunties do their takes out. Oh, especially the popular one. Yes. So typically the way that this happens is on social media and, um, and they will essentially what they'll do is they will send the mob of their followers after somebody. So what you end up with, like, like they'll post like, oh, this person ships this character and this character together. And that makes them a pedophile or whatever, right? That like, that's a super, super common that's thing with aunties, word. right? Like that's the buzzword um, that they usually will use. So they'll say that. And then their, you know, several thousand followers will be like, 
gross, this person's horrible, and um, and I am sitting at home all day with nothing to do. So now I'm going to go and respond to all of their tweets with hateful things, with gore, gore images, with um, telling them, you know, to go die and awful, awful things like that. And then if that doesn't work, I'm going to slide into their DMs and send them this stuff, you know, and, and, we're, and just so many people are doing that over the course of of uh, maybe a few hours that uh that like the human brain just cannot handle it like you can't handle reading um dozens and dozens of comments about how awful you are you just can't like that's just not something humans are equipped to do so that is their typical tactic of hate but like i said sometimes it does spill over into real life like aunties have doxed people and gotten hold of personal information and like come after artists they particularly hate in, in the real world, um, like the cookie story that I told. Let's also, let's also acknowledge that this is also happening not just in a fandom space anymore. This this is what we're describing is also the phenomenon of cancel culture. Oh yeah, which which is which is you know I and I hate that term because cancel culture is so much more complicated and stuff like that. Yeah, it's really but, multiple things under one one word, which makes it really yeah. a problem. But you know, <laughs> but this idea of of a mass of there being an opinion and it is an opinion it is not necessarily a fact it is something that might be twisted it might be something that was taken out of context who knows there is this thing that happened that then people formed opinions about and then want to destroy a person's life mm -hmm. based off of their own opinions about something they may not know yeah exactly and, and i don't need to know things to want to cause permanent psychological damage <laughs> to somebody landon i am <laughs> bored on the internet and no one else is human but well, me well let's be clear like they don't they're not they're not doing this not because yeah. like they're not doing this because they like we're, we're being a little bit flippant right and and i started this so I'll, I'll say it but they're not necessarily doing this because they're bored they really truly yeah. believe that they are ending bigotry and abuse and things like that like they really truly believe that like if they ran all of the artists they didn't like and all of the writers they didn't like off of Twitter, that racism would get better, right? Or that homophobia would get better. Like they really believe that. They they genuinely believe that kind of crap. It's not true. They, they do. They do. And I mean, I'm, I'm not like, I, I agree with what you're saying. It's not totally an idle, totally an idle thing. But like, if this wasn't a hobby, okay, so people get into hobbies because they are bored and yeah. and this is a hobby for people it is a sport mm -hmm. um or it's i think there is initially some kind of absence but or lacking think, yeah that people think... are looking to fill and that and instead of going and being like well i don't like this thing but i would rather bond with people over i don't know things i like like positive bonding or creation it's like a destructive bonding mm. that's the thing Absolutely. you're you're bonding over like the hate bonding over hate so there's like you know you'll notice that there's kind of a difference we'll say even in like genuinely like transformative justice spaces there is a different vibe between like i hate the racist and i'm trying to think of a transformative world like one of them is more spiteful and like hunting down things that they despise and then one of them maybe like curates or rejects or explains things but has a greater focus on the imaginary potential of alternate universes and like aunties fall into that former category where they are bored but instead of being like now is a great time to learn how to knit <laughs> they're like i would prefer to fill my time honing my bullying skills <laughs> yeah i think that's pretty I, much right yeah i think that there's also i think that we also have to say that in their own head i don't think that this is something that they think is hobby like or fun i think that they oh no it's a vigilante. crusade they're vigilant yes they're they're solving a problem fighting crime um, taking down injustice, quest for one justice bad right person here. or bad. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and I think that that is important to remember when we're talking about their state of mind. That that's where they're at. Yeah. 
Because what they think they're doing and, and what we see them doing are two very different things. Yes. And I think it is important to, to keep those both in mind. Because um, they're the Batman and anyone they go after is a, is, a, is, a, is a villain. Yeah. So they Bat- feel justified in their behavior, even though it's obviously not because that person isn't a villain. Yeah. It's funny you should, funny you should mention that. Landon, because um, Alex, who is, is a friend of mine, regrettably not here this morning, posted a uh, Planet of Cops, which is a, an article <sighs> on Medium, and it and it reminds me like ever, they're like I'm a I'm just a bad person, or I'm like I'm just a person hunting down the bad people who do bad things, and they don't have any right to defend themselves, and if they defend themselves, I can escalate my level of violence and i'm like ah yes that is indeed the cop mindset is yeah, it not it is they are being internet cops like and, and a lot of people you'll see people talk about we're, we're using the word aunties but another word people will use is fan cops um because cops. yeah yeah that's another way that they'll call them because a lot of them use that type of behavior so yeah, yeah. The, the ultra and not in the nice way ladies and gentlemen the, the ultra violence like goes out of their way you walking down the street appear suspicious so i could body slam you kind of cops yeah <laughs> yep not in not in like the i want to try to make people safer and that's my goal <laughs> you know <laughs> i mean that's their, pr- that that is, their purported goal. goal that's what they think their goal is right and i don't yeah, think they're lying about they that believe. like i don't think they're no. lying about that they no, aren't which no. is, and makes I, and I don't think, yeah and i don't think that they're they're here like they're not trying to be like in that and i agree with sasha this is what makes them scarier is they're not trying to be horrible terrible people who are ruining lives they're trying to be people who are genuinely thinking that they're making the world a better place but they don't have the depth and ability to see other perspectives and understand how complex the situation is and they think they have the easy solution and they need they're, they're kind of they're kind of trying to convert everybody too and if yeah. you cannot be converted then you must be an enemy yeah absolutely um, all right so I, I, should we get yeah, into the story? the story okay yeah. all right so the way that we're going to do this just to let you guys know so i'm gonna i'm gonna say it again um this is something that happened to sasha and and please show her the grace that you would expect to be shown if you were sharing something sensitive but we're going to kind of break this up right so so she's going to tell a little bit of the story and then we're going to kind of pause um so if you guys have questions or comments for her please type them in the chat um, Landon, as our lovely moderator, is going to be helping us with a lot of that stuff. So, um, so yeah, with that, uh, Sasha, can you take it away with you? Kind of guess, kind of part one of the story. How did it start? All, all right. So, um, once upon a time in a land not so far away, I am on the internet, and, I, and I'm like, I'm a little nervous <laughs> about uh, about telling this story. Because it was so incredibly spicy at at the time, but all, and also thank you for anyone who's listening to me. Because if you're my friend, you've heard this before. But oh my gosh, it was one of the weirdest, most intense things that have like ever ever happened to me. So uh, here we go. Once upon a time on the internet, I meet somebody online that I think was interesting. I'm going to call them Judas. <laughs> so um. <laughs> Judas, I, I, I meet Judas in a kind of like a, a mutual community. Um, I think they're interesting, but I'm not a, a big pursuer pursuer type. I, I have a tendency to, I already have a bunch of friends, but um, Judas pursues me and pays me a lot of attention. So, um, so I am charmed. I'm, I'm charmed by all of this attention. Um, I am led to believe uh, that that we have a lot in common, and and Judas is kind of an, a public edge lord when I when I first meet them, and so you know as as an edge edge lord myself, I'm like haha, um, uh, you know, fellow associate, comrade. <laughs> uh, so so Judas so, so Judas shows their hand first, where they're like you know this this and that. And so I'm like, okay, well, I, I'm sharing with a like mind. We can, we can discuss these things. Um, at the same time, I am also very lonely, and I, I go through some other friend breakups at the time, or I'm having difficulties with other friends. 
And so this person that is paying me all of this attention and who is uh, talking to me about all the things we have in common is just very seductive. So I totally go for it. That is, is that, is that a pause point or, you know? Yeah. Sure, um, yeah. And so I, I was there, so I'm going to share just a little bit, um, from my perspective on each of kind of these chapters <laughs> of the story. Uh, I, I, I met this person too. And so I saw all of this stuff that Sasha is talking about with Judas. And, and I have to say, like, just to kind of back you up, what you're describing is exactly what I saw. Like the way that I saw it, Judas really wanted to be your friend real hella bad and did everything they could to try to make that happen. And it, from the outside, it, it looked very endearing, you know, it did. So, um, you know, this wasn't, this was a very normal, like, I mean, y'all have all been in these situations. This was a very normal, like you meet someone online and, and you take a liking to them and, you know, you, you do the, the online things to get their attention, right? You spend a lot of time in their DMs. You, um, you spend a lot of time in, you know, uh, communities that you're both a part of talking to each other. Like, um, there's, there was a lot of signals that this person was giving off that was like, I really, really want Sasha to be my friend. And that was palpable at the time. Um, that's all I and wanted you, to yeah. add. <clears throat> and you consider them a real friend, right, Sasha? Like you, once oh, you yes. have... Once you had built this relationship, it wasn't like this, oh, she's pursuing me or they're pursuing me. So therefore, I really appreciate this friend this friendship. It's, it's more of a, oh, I saw a friendship here and I built it. Yeah. So like in, in the beginning, like um, I'm I'm getting pursued and I'm, I'm charmed by that. But uh, Judas spends a lot of time talking to me and this is this is like the really crazy part so i think with a lot of aunties um they are strangers to you like they find your tag your blog your thing that they do not approve of and your identity is is irrelevant uh, to them you know the full dimension of your person but i am spending like four hours a day talking to judas like we go out of our way to talk like all the time so like i'm tra like um i am at this time unemployed and traveling so i have a lot of free time and we are just chatting it up they are so encouraging and thoughtful and supportive of me we have these long conversations i'm always like if there's anything you never you don't want to talk about with me if you're ever uncomfortable please let me know like da 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 like we are buds for all intents and purposes we are buddies um, and I, just, I wanted to clarify that because i think that's an important part of this yes it, it is it is part of what makes this like so wacky and intense it's not just like it's initially this seductive relationship but it does become this like genuinely supportive friendship all right, but so it's about to get terrible. So, um, <laughs> this is all I laugh out of nervousness. <laughs> oh, like when I talk about it, I like I, part of me like flashes back to these moments, and I'm just like, what the what in the world? Okay, so um, a mutual. So uh, the thing is, is that a lot of people from my personal friend circle and community had also joined Judas's community. So. Um, Judas goes after me, and little do I know, targets my friends and is essentially trying to sever them from me. It's bonkers. So they have this entire campaign where they are talking to me. I am their best buddy now. And then they are picking off my other friends, like, one at a time. Some people bail. Um, on on Judas's community, they get they get a bad vibe, or the edge lordiness is is too much. But other people are, are hanging around, and um, one of these people comes to me, and they're like, "Judas isn't who you think they are." I get this message. I am drunk at a karaoke bar in Japan. <laughs> and I look at my phone, and I'm like, I'm like, Whoa. I'm like, uh oh, Scooby, and um, they're like. Um, Judas is taking screenshots of your private conversations and is reposting them in a group chat and talking about how much they hate you. 
and there and I'm just like what in the world but something about it immediately rings true to me I can't even explain it maybe it's just my low self esteem and it, and it didn't shock me at all that that there was this wild coordinated betrayal or more was like this person I they, I had no reason to believe that they would lie to me this is somebody that's been part of my community for years that I've written with on several occasions like I have no reason to think that this is is faked and they also the same person tells me that um Judas attempts the the separation lying misrepresentation technique between this um between one of my friends and then this friend that's coming to tell me about this so i'm like awesome i <laughs> i wait for judas to wake up we're in different time zones obviously and i'm like how could you do this to me? and first there's the denial phase and then there's the like i'm so sorry i know this was wrong of me to do i was doing it and then i but then i stopped and i would you know i wasn't going to tell you because i i had stopped doing it i'm like why did you do this to me and the you know the trouble with this conversation is that um judas will go back and mass delete their messages with me so i can recount the tone of it to you um and i have one screenshot of it but um but not the entire thing i'm basically just like on like if you didn't like me like you remember this is a person who went out of their way to come into my dms and pursue me and, has and been i'm like for and has been for three for, 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 for three for months several months yeah yeah like you are under no obligation to play fake friends with me like this is you do not you did not have to do this and there's, you know, like all these apol the apologies, you know, I just, I, you know, I was scared. I didn't know what to do. Blah, 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 like, because in my mind, by the way, like at this point, this is very personal. And what I assumed that it was in my drunk sobbing on the floor of the, the hostile hallway is that Judas actually decides that they want to be friends with one of my friends more than they want to be friends with me. And so they use um they use our private conversations as a currency to buy the friendship of my other friend that is what i assume i assumed that i had been like commodified and sold off and i was like if you just didn't want to be friends with me at all like you could have skipped this step and just gone you know just just not done this and and so the but like um deep irony here one of the things that Judas um was very adamant about with me was you need to work on your low self-esteem you take too much shit from people and you give them too much credit and you do not like stand up for yourself or defend yourself like you need to raise your bar was one of Judas's arguments with me which again this is this is very charming to have somebody come and tell you that like you deserve better and so as we're having this conversation, I'm crushed by the realization that Judas's own philosophy preempts me from continuing this relationship because I, I didn't, I really didn't want to lose this person. It was very, I was really distraught because again, like this, these things that I'm hearing about technically that Judas doesn't hasn't done anything to me yet. They've just talked about me and I have to give up this relationship that was doing things for me because you just talked about me. So I'm like, <laughs> this is the worst. But, um, so like, <clears throat> but I kind of mull over it for a couple of days. I have to get over my hangover. And then I'm just like, I go back and I'm just like, I just want to know what the fuck, bro. Like, why did you do it? And the story completely changes now. Like suddenly I am accused of. And there's of only being like a, there's only like a two day to make it clear. Sorry. There's only like a two day gap here. Like there's maybe two sleeps in between these two conversations. Just, just to be clear. Like it's like real short. So sorry. It's real. Sh it's real short. And I managed to kind of work myself into more of a proper froth um at this time and i but i really just wanted to know i'm just like what in the fuck like please just articulate like what what was going through your mind and this is where <sighs> kind of the anti-behavior really starts that i start to see because a lot of the the anti-behavior is about like dropping highly charged buzzwords and accusations and even like phrases 
um, will get kind of trotted out and they are so emotionally evocative um, that people like either will not question them or they're afraid to question them because if you do, then it's like, well, you don't support survivors. You don't believe survivors is like kind of um, a common refrain here. So I get accused of abusive behavior and I'm just like, what? What's um, and you know and even though that this is absurd, remember this this is my friend that I've had nothing but friendly conversations with. Um, we haven't even had a fight. We haven't even had a fight ever. And and you just trust this out. And I'm like, but okay, we'll also spend my disbelief. Give me an example of anything that I did that you feel was this way. And they just refuse. Um, what what Judas claims is like, well, well, you can't be trusted with this information because you'll manipulate it, which I think is actually just their way of being like, I actually have nothing to back up what I'm saying. I cannot support this by any means. But like, this is how I'm, I'm having to justify this really terrible thing that I've done. And we, we, we kind of argue and there is this, this, I don't know, this kind of sad moment of tension at the end of the conversation where, you know, um, they're, you know, they're like, well, it, it you know, whatever. Cause I, I w would never do it again. And I'm just like, I wish I could believe you. Like, I really, I really wish I could believe you i wish i could believe that this didn't i don't say this but in the moment i'm like i wish i could believe this didn't point to like a really terrifying character flaw here because i would have liked for us to still be friends but you can't get everything you want so i'm just like well i wish you the best like i'm not going to bother you and judas tells me like i'm not going to bother you and i'm not going to talk any shit about you and i'm gonna leave you alone <laughs> this is only chapter two of a four chapter story so you can guess <laughs> yeah I, was, I wonder what's gonna happen next folks so, okay I what's happen. so at this point i want to say this is where i became aware of of what was going on so after both of these conversations i became aware and sorry hey eric um i forgot to say hi to you because sasha's in the middle of a, of a chapter of the story and i didn't want to interrupt her you have shown up for the spicy part <laughs> um <laughs> So this is where I became aware of what was going on. This person, um, after these two conversations, Judas reached out to me. Now, I witnessed all this stuff this, that Judas was doing, except for the talking about Sasha behind her back. Um, Judas pursued me slightly, but she only pursued me from the perspective of um i had a youtube channel and so potentially someday she could come on my youtube channel that was never going to happen by the way um but so so i was very friendly with her and and she trusted me and i trusted her like she basically used me as like somebody to go to for advice which like i do that for a lot of people that's fine that's not a problem and um and and you know they seem so harmless that it was just like whatever so I get this DM with Judas. Karen, I need some help. I need some advice. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> this was not like an unusual oh, DM, but it had, yeah, I, this wasn't like an unusual DM. Like I get this from a lot of people and, and for people that I'm not friends with, you'll know, cause you might've sent me some, I won't answer them a lot of times or I'll tell you, hey, I don't give DM advice. But you know, if you've been friends, if you've become my friend through months of interaction, then I will because I'm just a fucking sucker. <laughs> <laughs> also, you're an educator who likes helping people. I do. I like helping people. And, and I saw this person as a friendly acquaintance, someone that was worthy of my trust. And, um, and I knew they were coming to me because I was, one, I was somebody that they trusted. So they ask for my help. And they give me these lines about how someone in the community like in the rp discord community they won't say who um is suspected of being an abuser and mm. further and further this is i think the first time this accusation came out was actually to me i don't know because i'm not privy to all the conversations this person had of course i'm privy to a lot of them I have a lot of receipts but i don't have all of them um they they said that this person was not only an abuser but they were potentially abusive towards children because they were a pedophile, right? Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, so I'm like, holy shit, fuck. So I'm, I turn on the niceness because I need to know, like if this is true, I want receipts and I wanna know, right? 
I'm so nice to Judas. I'm so, and in, in hindsight, I really regret that, that I didn't just tell them to <laughs> F off. But I was so nice because I thought that they were genuine and I trusted them. So I'm well, like, a, that's a hell of an accusation. Yes, you. I know it that in is. Eighth grade circles, it gets thrown around like a buzzword. But like to actually be called or to call someone a pedophile yeah. is an incredibly serious fucking thing. And not and only like, as... and not only is Asasha apparently a pedophile, she's also an abuser. So she might actually go hurt a kid. Right? That was yeah. like the connection. Or she is hurting kids. I'm sorry, but in order to be a pedophile and an abuser, you have to actually actively be hurting children. But you're but but <laughs> the thing is, and so like I hear this, right? Or I read this, right? I'm not I don't uh, I don't read with my ears, but I read you this. You never got to hear it. <laughs> Judas's beautiful voice. No, I, I don't think so. Maybe once. I don't think so. I did. Um, but anyway, so I'm like, shit, I need to know what Judas is talking about. I need to see the receipts. Like, I need to understand this situation. Um, so I'm like talking to them, talking to them, being really nice, like trying to build up the trust to get the receipts. We have conversation for maybe like, it's maybe like 30 minutes to an hour. It's not a, it's not a short conversation, but it wasn't a long conversation either. Um, and I eventually realized that... Judas knows I'm too smart, and they are never going to tell me who it is or show me the receipts that are proof. So I realized this. I talked to them a little while longer. I don't get the goods. Um, and then I start investigating. So they gave me, like, tidbits here and there that I could figure things out. And it became very obvious after about 20 minutes of thinking about it and rereading the conversation that it was Sasha, that Judas was talking about Sasha. It's me. Yeah. So the thing that I do is... I hold this information, and the reason why I hold this information and don't tell anybody is because ultimately, the conclusion that I told Judas was that if no one's actually getting hurt and you don't have any proof of anyone getting hurt, then these are just, just thought crimes. And I personally do not care what adults do with other adults in private, right? And that was all that Judas had, right? All that Judas had was that Sasha had revealed some plots of old role plays that she did with previous partners. That was that it. That is That was my it. My thought crime. That was all Judas had and she didn't even have screenshots of these, you know, supposed nasty role plays. All she had was that Sasha had shared that she had done these plots in the past. That was it. Okay. So <laughs> <laughs> so ultimately the conclusion that I come to once I realize I'm not going to that either the goods don't exist or I'm not going to be given them is to say I don't care what adults do with other adults in private um, and if you don't actually believe this person is going to go out and hurt anyone then probably what you should do is just block them and move on right because from my perspective what what Judas was really sharing with me is I am uncomfortable and scared not that the person's actually dangerous. Of course, that's not the words they used. The words they used were to say Sasha was dangerous, but I think I thought that's what they were they were doing. This is only still chapter two, so obviously that is there's more. But that's it's the conversation. Yeah, so that's the conversation I had with this person. I did not share with anyone that this conversation happened because my hope, and I, it's because I think too highly of people, because I think people always want to do the right thing, and I keep getting proven wrong. But my hope was that, okay, I told this to Judas, Judas is going to take this advice and they're going to drop it and it's going to go away and everything's going to be fine, right? That's my thought process. This is fine. For clarification of timeline, Judas came to you after the falling out with them and Sasha, correct? Correct. Or was this during the same? Okay, so it was No, okay. it was like, it was basically, this was all within the span of like a week, right? This was all like okay, boom, boom, so boom. Back to so back. them going to you was perhaps a rad, was a reactionary result of this falling out that they were having with Sasha. Yeah, because I don't think, okay, and absolutely. Sasha, correct me if I'm wrong, but the, the pedo accusation was not told to you. You were just told you were an, you were an abuser, right? That's, that is, that is correct. Okay. Because Judith and I actually have very elaborate conversations around this topic. Like, this isn't, this so crazy this isn't just me like haha -ha, my edgelord plots like i have detailed good faith discussions around like problematic content in media with judas who i will say um i at the time i know falls to the right of me on the spectrum i i knew that i was um more liberal 
We'll basically mm -hmm. put it that way. I was more lefty in these opinions, but that um, Judas took me in good faith. Well, because so, y'all were friends, and, and you thought that that you know well, that she was treating you like a friend, right? Just like you would if you mm -hmm. have a friend that's that's more right wing than you are, or or a friend and that's this... more liberal than you are, or whatever. And this wasn't like something that you were just like, hey, by the way, flex that I've done this thing. Like, it no, is no. something that you as a friend were talking about a similar topic. It was in context, on conversation. You weren't just trying to, like, edgelord them out. Yeah, Judas leads with their flexes, and I, like, okay. respond with a comradely flex. And that's, we'll that's say. an important, I mean, that's an important thing to, to talk about. That this is, that you were, a lot of the time during this... And in these conversations, reacting to the current conversation in the context of, of the situation that you guys are in. Like, mm -hmm. she, and they were asking you questions or talking about these things with mm -hmm. you in a conversation. Mm -hmm. Or I'm re and I'm reacting most of the time in private. Um, yeah. I understand that the things I write or the things I talk about... Um, can be traumatic or remind people of their traumas and i'm not trying to shove my shit in people's faces but it's like it's very much don't like don't read and adults have the ability to tab away from websites and close discord tabs but you know ev even then i try to be thoughtful and respectful and respectful of of any ups any boundaries that that judas might have so that's this is the other super wacky thing is that i have like and i have receipts of this explicit conversations with them where i am like are you okay is this bothering you do you want me to stop talking and they're like no it's fine if i ever need you to you know if i ever don't want to talk about something i will tell you and i'm like okay cool not cool. <laughs> Spoiler alert, ladies and gentlemen, it's not cool. Do, right. do, do you want me to tell to part three now? Yeah. Um, no, Chris, do we, really? Any other questions? Say any other questions before part yeah. three? I don't think so. I think so far it's been pretty clear that this was a organic friendship that meant a lot to Sasha as well as Judas. And that then once it came to an end, Judas was possibly spir spiraling uh, after that. Oh, mm -hmm. Oh yes, which is which is where and, we went from being an abuser to being called a pedophile, and you can yep. see the you can see the uh, increase of aggression between those two comments. Yeah. So okay. I think but yes. Going on, chapter three. I think, I think going on chapter to, three. Yeah, and, and Eric agrees. There are no questions in the chat. So okay. <laughs> so yes. So here is where it starts to get. I would say really bad. Um, I mean, it's bad already. It's bad that I found out that this person that I was really close to has, like, betrayed me and, like, secretly hates me. So in the beginning, this is, that's, like, my first thing. I'm just, like, Judas hates me. Like, I've lost this friend and this friendship. And I am initially just so sad about that. Um, it then occurs to me that I have no idea what Judas is screenshotting. We have had a... Remember, we're talking four hours a day here. There's a lot of content. I have no idea. I have no idea what level of spiciness is getting redistributed or taken out of context. As soon as I find out about this shit-talking server, Judas deletes it. There were like five people in it. And they delete it so fast before anybody else can like go and like collect the screenshots of Judas. Okay, so there were some red flags by the way, I'll tell you two of them. One of them was that Judas led in their relationship with me with um, shit talking about a person who had stopped role playing with them. I will later re I will later re you know, we'll go back to them in a bit, but they start with mass shit talking. I'm like, oh, you know, I'm sorry that happened to you. I take people up like Karen. I, I kind of take people at their word. I'm a such a mistake. Person. I got to stop doing that. <laughs> I don't think we have to stop doing that. But I'm just joking. Stop doing it. I'm just joking. I don't think we should stop doing it. But you just, that's why we're part of why we're sharing this story, right? So you guys can be aware of some of this stuff so that, you know, if you're kind of like me or kind of like Sasha, maybe you can see this coming before it gets like this. <laughs> Try not to get owned. Yeah. So um, the other red flag was that Judas would periodically clear 
the all the channels in the Discord server that they owned. They would just wipe it completely. Okay. And, uh, you know, I, I thought that was a little weird because sometimes we would paranoid. have like... It was super weird. I was there for that. It was freaking weird. That's not paranoid <laughs> just... or anything. I'm just like, sometimes we had like really good conversations, like good discussions there. And like, you know, I'd like to go back and, and reference them and, and Judas wiping everything all the time was kind of annoying, but I'm like, whatever, like it's, but it it's wasn't just, house. and it wasn't just sensitive stuff. Like they would wipe stuff that was completely innocuous. It was really weird. <clears throat> it was like, they would like backdate. So like, imagine that like every couple of weeks or 30 days, this person is just completely clearing out the discussion channels. And I'm just like, okay, that's a little ominous. You know, I didn't think about it at the time. I just thought that this was one of their little idiosyncrasies, right? You accept the weirdness of your friends. So <laughs> anyways, so Judas deletes every all the screenshots. And I am like terrified because I have shared a lot with this person. I am afraid that I'm going to get doxxed or something. I am, I am just like scared out of my mind. And, um, okay, this is the other really important part. Um, I am so ashamed. I, and I really want you to, like, feel that visceral word. Shame. I do not dislike what I've done. I hate myself. I'm about to die of shame. These really personal, private things that relate a lot to my own personal traumatic experiences are getting circulated, uh, decontextualized to frame me as a monster and a potential predator. And I had like all of these like rational arguments to defend myself, but the, the secret is, is that this philosophy is like super insidious if you have any kind of hole in your armor. Because, you know, when bad stuff happens to you and, I don't know, you, you consume or create taboo content, you, there is, like I said, the, sh the shame monster is like a little parasite just waiting to find something to feed on. And I had like, you know, Judas would talk to me about self-esteem all the time and self-acceptance and self-love and all this jazz. And but this was the one thing. This was like my my stash for a rainy day. This is my stash of self-loathing for a rainy day for whenever I want that hit of self-hatred. And I keep it on the back shelf. And suddenly it has been knocked out of the pantry onto the floor. It is all over the floor. The ants are coming into my house. They are crawling all over me and biting me. I want I want to die. It is it is not it, I'm not a nervous or anxious person, but it is not an exaggeration to say that I am like on the edge of panic attacks. I, and I've never had a panic attack in my life. And I'm just so agitated. I'm just like, Oh my God, terrible, terrible thing. Um, I, I do have a mild delusion at this point though. For some reason, I, I have it in my mind that people don't know I'm problematic. Later I will go through my own <laughs> personal archives. Sorry. I don't mean to, and I don't mean to laugh. I'm just, sorry. <laughs> It's just so, so hearing yeah, you say that sentence, like, <laughs> I just like this is this. So this is the thing with shame. It's like part of shame is this story that you tell yourself, which is just like it. This is this is the line of shame. If anybody knew this about me, nobody would ever love me. That is the one liner of shame. But mm -hmm. you, you'll notice that the core of that is it's if anybody knew this. So the thing is, is that the second half is actually generating the first half. Nobody will ever love me. And then it's like, oh, okay, what can, what can we use to justify nobody will ever love me? And like, if we knew this thing. So it, it like literally like erases memories and like deletes context. And I, I somehow, somehow I have this idea that nobody knows anything about me. So I'm like, oh, fuck. I have to like, in order to. I, I'm afraid of, like I said, this doc scene and this whole scandal. So I'm like, okay, well, I need, I need to warn people and I need to out myself. Out, out is in quotes here. So um, <laughs> I start to go to, I, I like, and I expect the worst, by the way, because my my self hatred is, like I said, it's all over the floor and the ants are in it. So I start going to people and shock and awe. Nobody tells me that I'm a monster, or that I am a monster waiting to happen. People listen Plot to me twist. and they're like, well, 
plot twist. <laughs> um, like, we know you. You're a good person. Like, fiction isn't real. People read and write things for all kinds of reasons, et cetera, et cetera. Like, a lot of these people have known me for a really long time. And they're, they're I don't know, like, there's almost, like, this sense of, like, bafflement. They're like, like, you're, you're like, first, some people are like, you thought I didn't know this. And I'm like, yes. And they laugh. And, or like, um, I remember going to tell Karen and Karen's like, that fits. And I'm like, what? We've been new. We've been new. We, we've been, we've been, we've been new, Karen says. It's cool. And I'm like, oh, okay. And, and people are really nice to me. My friends come through and I'm like, and so I'm like on fire. And I am so grateful for this. I have a bunch of people who stand around me and just pour buckets of water on me. Just, I'm on the verge of a mental breakdown. And I have a bunch of people who are like, I'm really sorry this happened to you. Like, I know you better than that. Like, I don't give a shit what you write with other adults. Like, have a nice day. And so, like, the thing about, like, shame and, like, trauma and all of this is that it's not just in your brain. It's in your body. So they are reassuring me mentally, but I am still having to like physically process like all of this like nervousness and anxiety and remember grief, like this grief because I thought I had this person who like also shared my experiences. Uh, you know, I really thought Judas was like like a like a shared experience kind of person who related to things the way that I did. And so like this shame, this trauma, and this grief is, is going through me. There is, I will say, um. There is one person that I tell who just flips the fuck out. And um, luckily, once again, I'm, you know, I'm not naming anybody, but I, I have a really good friend who is just like, fuck your shit, fuck your shit, sir. Like, <laughs> no. And just, just ref like refuses to um, participate or like buy into that. And so that, so I am, um, I'm being braced. And so, like, that that kind of could have been the end of it right there. But but once there's many points where Judas could have kind of, like, backed off or let this go, including just never engaging with me or being my friend or, like, fading out. It's not that hard to just ignore people's DMs or be unavailable. Like, I'm not dumb. I can take a hint. But anyways, so Judas is, Judas is not done with me. And um, I have speculated so much on why they do... What they do, I won't get into that here, but what they do next is they start going around to other community leaders in, like, Role Play Hub Discord, and they start telling people that I am a lurking predator slash monster and I need to be exiled. So, this is this is one of the friends that, like, flips the fuck out at me when I talk about Judas, and instead of, like, hearing this is a person who, like, essentially like took your private information and misrepresented it they just they just yell at me and i'm like oh, victim blaming to the max and i'm like what the? i'm like okay but um this this person agrees in that moment not to tell anybody well this this does not happen i start getting kicked and banned from various places i have community moderators and administrators coming into my dms telling me they have heard i'm a predator but nobody will provide me with any screenshots by the way this is another thing like there nobody nobody will actually be like here is the thing that you said or here is the actual no thing that i heard because there is <sighs> Because there is no, there is no, there, there was no, no proof. proof. There was no proof. There was, yes. There wasn't. There it didn't no exist. Proof. What, what did exist was out of context screenshots that only would have like one line from what Sasha said, right? And nothing mm -hmm. else surrounding it. So you can't tell what's going on. And like multiple of those will co were cobbled together. And that was the proof. And that's why nobody would show Sasha the proof about her is because as soon as Sasha asked, pro they probably realized like, She's not going to be convinced by me showing her four screenshots of single lines of text. And so they'd say, so then, fuck no. And it's yeah. also been that, that Judith didn't show them either. Right? Sometimes, sometimes, so sometimes, point, sometimes she didn't. Sometimes so, she didn't have to. And so that's because. Point, and at this point, because of how the EMT movement has happened, there didn't have to be proof. There just had to be someone who cried wolf. And. Sasha happened to be the wolf. Mm -hmm. I just, 
I and you know and, you know just just kind of as an aside, it, it was shock and awe. I am sort of a spicy, opinionated person. Wherever no. I go, <laughs> yeah. Would you? Would you? Me? But um, basically, there are people who like maybe don't know me, but have maybe interacted with me a few times or know of me. They know you and by reputation. They know me by reputation, and what they basically know is that I'm a smart ass, and that just <clears throat> sticks in their craw. And so here comes this opportunity. Um, to slap the smart ass. And it doesn't matter if it's on false pretenses because secretly people just want to punch me and it doesn't, it's not so much, they're not too much concerned um, with whether. The way you just said it though, is they're like, sometimes people just want to punch me. It's like a true fact it's... of life for you. Yes. <laughs> Listen, I, 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 um, I elicit very strong emotional reactions from people. You tend to either like really love me or I become like your weird psychic projection of things that you hate the most. It's, it's very strange. It happens consistently with me enough that I just, just whatever I'm, I'm Danny Torrance and I just activate ghosts wherever I go. <laughs> so, wow. Um, what a, what a reference. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, ask me about my cosplay. But um, <laughs> anyways, so um, what what happens is, so, you know, I'm going around, or, 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 like, uh, people are coming into my DMs and being like, Sasha's a predator. And this is extremely humiliating because no one will present me with any evidence. I can't defend myself. It's just gross and disgusting um but i was e i am up to this point i am still willing to take a beating because self-esteem yo but <laughs> my line is that i remember i have good friends who are standing up for me karen included <clears throat> and when my friends don't go along with the burn the witch mob judas expands their campaign to be like these people these people and these communities support predators mm -hmm. and that that is where i finally get mad so um not sure if you've intuited this, but remember I, I say that Judas pitched themselves as a like mind. So just pause for a moment and imagine what kinds of things they had to say and do to lead me to that conclusion. All right. So you <clears throat> just stated that thought a bit. So this is me saying um, I had shit on Judas this entire time. Yeah. Like, well, if well if the I, shit if the shit that she has on you is legitimate, then you have the same shit on her. That's, That's the thing. Right. Neither this is legitimate. Is... Neither is actually shit. Okay, but yeah, you have the exact but... same thing that she has. Yes. The 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 point is you can is that... that she is a hypocrite. To the... Yes. Yeah. If if I've done something wrong, she's done something, or they've done something wrong. Um. If if I've done nothing wrong, then they've done nothing wrong. We're kind of like, we are kind of chained together in this boat, which is like, what's kind of. <laughs> insane about this um but the thing is is that i really did not want to hurt judas i just this is my friend <coughs> and oh, you okay like I, i'm sorry uh, cough <laughs> oh, fuck off <laughs> talking for two hours wrong. is hard <laughs> oh, i didn't bring sorry, and i didn't bring a glass good. of water because i'm a ding dong um i will grab one in a bit but anyways <clears> so like i just i really do not want to hurt Judas, I am trying to just like, I just want this to blow over. I do not want to humiliate them, but they start going after my friends. And like, I like one of my friends is like breaking down in tears at work because of the strife that this is, is causing um, her community. And that is, it's kind of my moment where I'm like, like, I have to do something, like, even if I'm not willing to protect myself, I, I need to protect my friend. And so, um, at this point, there, <laughs> this is insane. This is just, this is absolutely high school mean girls bonker shit. There are actually become two different sides in this, in our, we're just like one narrow part of the, the Discord roleplay community, but in our little pond, there come to be two groups of people, the people who want to burn me at the stake and the people who are like, we call bullshit. And they're like, 
And I, so I end up talking to like different community leaders and they're just, you know, I, I tell them what happened. And one of them that I mentioned was this person that Judas had, um, had written with and then been dumped by and then complained about them. And so um, uh -huh. this it all comes full me, circle. <laughs> yes. So this leader kind of tells me their story and provides me all of the details on that like different people like listen to my story and like even these people at the time like uh, karen is my friend um and you know a couple other people are but there are other people who don't really know me and i had to come out and i had to tell them this like really personal thing about myself and just be like here you go and it was also very heartwarming and encouraging that i had people who were basically strangers be like we hear what you're saying and you're still a good person and you still haven't done anything wrong like they didn't even need to like they didn't even need to like know my life story to be like it is absurd and stupid to assume that just based on someone's like fictional content creation slash consumption that they are actually doing things out in the world that's just dumb like you you know reasonable people so yeah. Shock, yeah. So um, it blows my mind. <laughs> and so, but yes. But anyways, the point of this is, is there's literally like a private Discord server formed by my haters to assassinate me and anyone associated with me. And to this day, I'm astounded that people who barely knew me could get so caught up in abusing and bullying me, and they bond over it. They are just like in the thick of it. This is their idea of a good time. So finally, I sit down and I go through my entire conversation log with Judas, of which I have a hard copy. And the reason I say this is because Judas goes back, um, unfortunately, sorry, Judas, after I get the hard copy and deletes every single message that they have with me. I don't know if they use a piece of software to do it, but Judas purges our entire conversation history, deletes their just, old Discord account and makes a new one. And just your side, their side, right? Like they don't just delete their side. the DMs. They just delete the messages they sent you. Yeah, I don't. There's a, there's a way that Discord works. There, they can't delete my they can't delete my messages. But yes, yeah, so technically, my my um, if I looked at it at present, my conversation log with Judas just looks like me talking to myself ad infinitum. But at this point, like I said, um, by the way, so at this point, it's been about two and a half months since my my breakup with judas and oh isn't it isn't it just a breakup where my <laughs> ex is mad at me like that was and it's turned, just an, and it's turned an rp community against you and tried to yeah, make war on your you friends know, some, sometimes you're just really mad that someone's not going to marry you so you um you try to kill them <laughs> anyway <laughs> So, that is what this is. They couldn't that is what you, the, so they the, decided the, to destroy you. The truth. So I go back and I basically find... Oh, so, oh, oh here's the other thing. So finally, finally, somebody who... Um, kind of like or is associated or kind of affiliated with the other side finally gets some of these screenshots for me and they are the most Frankenstein chopped up bullshit I've ever seen like they are all dated like today which kind of proves that Judas is sharing them in real time they are tiny little snippets they are like anybody that has like a brain reading them is like these are really short and seem to be part of something like much bigger like they don't like a lot of them are like posted like in mass and they're not like affiliated with each other it's just weird it is just it's not even a very good takedown campaign which then offends me i'm just like this is it like this is what you've got this is what people like this are is what seeing. convinced like seven eight whatever it was people to kick you out of First of one. their of their servers like really seriously it was, yeah that, it, it was that shit mood, though is being offended was, that the person trying to take you down isn't doing it good enough. No, but it was. <laughs> like, it was. I feel that because when I saw them, I had a very similar reaction. I was like, this is it? This convinced oh. like six, seven people? Holy fuck. I remember <laughs> reading them after the fact, and sorry, we'll get there in a second. I remember reading the screenshots after the fact and just looking at it and going, what does this even mean? <laughs> yeah, it means nothing. <laughs> I don't understand anything that's happening. Because, yeah, and so anyway, we'll continue. We'll get to that part in a second. Yeah, because but, that, that has to do with yeah. where I come in on this chapter. But we'll, Sasha can finish her part, and then I'll yes. talk about my part on this chapter. Yeah. <laughs> so I see this shit, and I'm like, you have got to be kidding me. 
And I'm like, okay, all right. So, so at this point, because I've kind of outed myself to like my wider friend circle, I'm like, it's time to just go, like, I'm going to go up on stage and I'm just going to blow myself up. Like, here we go, folks. Here we go. So I go into my conversation logs and I find a lot of Judas's greatest hits. I don't even share the greatest, the greatest hits, y'all. Like there's, (laughs) I could have done better, but I really don't, I still don't hate. Judas um and so I'm just trying to use like the least amount of force to get my point across you share is what I'm trying to do five through ten of the top ten albums I I share (laughs) hits five through ten and that's because I just like I said the the minimum amount of force to get my point across but I I get I you know this is this is an Eminem moment I have one shot so I need to get this done. So I draft up this Google document and I like workshop it essentially amongst amongst the people. And there was this one particular um, conversation snippet that Judas had been circulating. We'll, we'll call it like the big one. And I went and I get the entire conversation from which Judas takes it. And I actually paste the entire thing into this Google document. And I, I do like a little write up where I'm, where I criticize the screenshots. I'm like, I would like you to compare my screenshots to Judas's. You'll notice that mine are like time stamped and they are like date stamped. You will notice that Judas's all say like today or yesterday, you can't actually place them within context. They are actually very small. So I was basically just like, all of you are fucking morons. I say this polite. I, politely i'm well, the, just like, yeah the document says it nicely but like that's clearly the subtext like i can't believe you people believe yeah, the, this <clears throat> the subtext is all of you are morons and then what else i say is like just for the record i don't actually believe that anything that judas or i discuss is wrong so the solution to this i say this i say the solution to this is not you know like kill judas kill me and then kill judas i'm just like no like neither of us owe you anything for the record and then so i build i build my big beautiful bomb and judas goes to sleep being in a different time zone and we have somebody deliver the bomb to the opposing group chat and they leave it there and this this is this is kind of it it does it does its job um, it, it basically says, like, Judas lied to all of you. They've misrepresented me. And by the way, all of this is fiction, so shut the fuck up. Um, and then by the time Judas wakes up, like, everybody has read it. There it is. <laughs> and they've started and, discussing it, too. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they don't discuss it very much. But a little uh, bit. You know, they, they, do, they do talk about it a little bit. And um, I will say, like, the, the mood, um, based on what we know was absolutely like shell shocked shell shocked and humiliated remember that these people hate me for being smarter than them so just imagine that they're like their one opportunity to punish me for being smarter than them like ends in like this huge dunk where i'm like you will always be dumber you were born dumber than me you're gonna die they notice that intelligence isn't real and i am just using this to to judge people's like compassion and critical thinking skills in a particular moment any end caveat but I um think also um it's important to think that also they they thought they were doing the right and moral and good you know, thing yeah okay 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 here's one particular you know okay so some of them think that i think a thing i think with um it's kind of a tangent but with a lot of the aunties like yes i think that you know they're like i'm doing the right thing but that's kind of the surface justification for um for this addictive behavior because they are venting stress sadness boredom anger trying to create their identities you know that's why they're it's a bunch of younger people it's a bunch of teenage bullshit or it's a bunch of traumatized people who don't feel like they have any recourse against their actual abusers they feel like you know there's there's no system that can give them any kind of solace or they are just filled with these high powered intense emotions and they need to find a vent for them and so much the better that they can vent it through this um this thing that makes them feel like you know vigilantes and and pursuers of justice so while on the and and i think a lot of i think there's definitely people in this group 
I can think of a few who I would say <laughs> are not in it for the justice at all. It's just that they are out to get me. And this is the best possible cover for them to go after me. So, um, yeah, because remember, so this... remember, Sasha is very polarizing, and some of these people, like legit, just don't like her, and and that's that's how it is. That's and that's, that's you know, and that's and not it's, like it's... that's not like a character flaw or anything. You don't have to like yeah. everybody. By, by the you way, like that's you... fine. <laughs> well, you don't. You absolutely don't have to like me. Yeah. Yeah, I think yes. that this, this particular movement against you was certainly more personal than the average mm -hmm. anti yes. against somebody else. So this was yeah, so personal. People this is who did feel stupider than you yes so and, and you know i guess that's kind of another tangent of of why these things happen so like we'll say um like someone goes after an artist I, I i can't confirm whether this is true or not but i'm going to speculate that it's artists above a certain threshold of talent mm -hmm. if you're drawing weird looking anatomically incorrect big-eyed children but they are for a lack of better word unpolished um, I don't imagine you're attracting the same level of attention as people whose art clearly has like uh, a lot more years True. dedicated to it. So there is this there's this envy component or I would say it's fiction that gets like more attention because it's more polished. Like, you got more kudos fine. than me on AO3. Ugh. You got more kudos than me on AO3. You've got more kudos than anything I've ever written in general. Like nobody is finding like the really embarrassing bad shit and being and like going after that person it's always things where there's i don't know possibly a bit of envy involved there has to be the person that they're going after has to be on some kind of pedestal for yeah, the mob have, dynamics to activate they have to assume that the person has reach or influence because or then, just because just talent. then their whole art i mean yeah but talent but like but then their argument would fall apart of if no one is reading their work, then they're not they're not the reason why pedophilia still exists or racism still exists. The only well, people who are reading their work does that, you know, continue the the trend of, of pedophilia. Well, well, rem yeah. remember, Landon, these things like nobody has ever seen these things that I've written. They, as oh. far as they're concerned for this story, they do not actually exist. People have only seen other writing that I've written. Like, yeah. yes. So they're, they're, they're not even that. Nobody is even consuming these things. I've only discussed them. But because I'm known to be, like, intelligent or talented, like, I'm going be because, down. Well, you have, because you run a website and a server. It's because yeah, you run a website uh, and a server. You're perceived as having oh power. My, let us oh, not deny oh my God. you have influence. You do. You did. God, yeah. And you do. I, mm -hmm. What's up, y'all? I got threat. influence. They were, threat they were threatened by you to an extent. And yes. just like aunties are on Twitter, if someone draws something that's getting a lot of likes, like you said, aunties are going to more likely go towards that because they view that that art has influence. Mm -hmm. Yes. I don't think it has got anything it. to do with the talent level, but has something to do because I think it, even if it was the most trashy thing, ever written I can just throw fifty shades of gray out there. <laughs> like That's true. it had influence and people want to tear it apart, deservedly on some levels. <laughs> but like it so it, it it matters the influence that you have and these people were obviously threatened by you. Just like aunties are on Twitter are threatened by other talent or people getting attention. Yeah. It's it's so dorky to say that I have influence, but okay, all right. So, um, <laughs> well, they they so perceive you to have influence regardless of how much you actually have, okay. right? Eric agrees. Yes, with you. he doesn't know how you have influence. <laughs> <laughs> you know, no, nobody really knows. Or oh, okay, how okay, how does owning and operating a server mean you have influence? I will answer that question for you. Um, so it is all actually a matter of perception. Yeah. Um, we are like the role, like role play as a hobby is huge. That ranges everything from role playing games like Final Fantasy and MMOs to play by post role play writing to D and D to LARPing. There, you know, there's all kinds of stuff out there. And, but what kind of happens is is that 
Oh, I was, sorry, you're going to get a big answer, Eric. We all want to feel like we have agency and some level of importance in our lives. We bond with people in our communities. Some people kind of take leadership roles. Some people become known for their contributions. And we basically get a uh, big fish in small pond syndrome. Like, you know, a lot of us aren't necessarily out there participating in like city council meetings, right? We're not senators. Um, but in these communities that You're we're in, senator. it's possible. <laughs> <laughs> Who lands in? Um, land in, land in 2020. <laughs> So, um, we get, so we get big fish and small pond syndrome because these are places where we can have some kind of impact with um, our attitudes, behaviors, the structures or the content that we create. And even though these things don't reach a lot of people, they do reach some people. And just, you know, by virtue of how these things kind of work, like everybody can make something, but not everything will be popular or useful or have longevity and anybody that kind of kind of sticks around long enough or makes something they can be perceived you know or they they, they do have a contribution or influence like i do have a website and a server that's been around for a while like i am far from like super important or cool i've just been around for a while i'm really familiar with my hobby i have a lot of opinions on it i've been writing for a long time and so even though, like, out in the real world, like, I'm just a person, like, in my small pond, I can be perceived as a big fish. It's not that I'm actually, like, a big fish. It's just that my community is small and narrow enough that if you are only circulating in, like, certain areas or certain channels, like, you know, in Discord, like, you know, certain, like, partners or whatnot get their special like role in the sidebar like you might see my name in the sidebar as like a partner and like come to the conclusion that i am the big like a big cheese like in the greater world i'm not but yeah yep yeah, that does that does mean that you you do have influence and i'm mm -hmm. not sure if you've experienced this eric but um I'm, have you ever had a situation where just because you are the mod or whatnot that people seem to want to be friends with you like people go out of their way to kind of like approach you or try and be chummy with you, like expecting favors mm -hmm. or anything like that. Um, so, so that's, that's kind of what happens. So like, you know, for perspective, I'm not blowing anybody's mind here, yeah, but because we're in this, Paul, but like, I thank God. <laughs> but, what would you I'm even do the, with that much new... influence? Oh my God. <laughs> Start the revolution, baby. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, changing topics is getting back, back to Okay. Okay. Wait, we have to, let's go back. Let's go back to the yeah. rest of the burn the witch chapter. Okay. This was a good tangent, yeah. but yeah, let's go back. But yeah. So, um, this is almost kind of, kind of the end of the chapter. So, um, okay. But um, I so Karen can kind of also um, give her perspective shortly on this. But anyways, what yeah. happens is the the doc goes in, people read it, um, are embarrassed, and kind of realize that uh, Judas is not the horse that they should bet on. Um, and so almost pretty much overnight, pretty much everybody backs down, and the server the server breaks up, and the campaign ends. Mm -hmm. So Karen, Karen, tell your bit now before I get to the, the Yeah, so my part of this chapter was this is where Judas actually dragged me kicking and screaming into this situation. So remember, remember, I had that conversation with Judas where I told this person that I don't care what adults do with other adults in private. Okay, this is screenshot is apparently enough to vindicate me. So while Judas is in this, you know, group chat with a bunch of community leaders, telling them about how awful and terrible Sasha is, uh, they also pull out about all of the other people that support Sasha and how awful they are, of which I am one of those people. And Judas shares the screenshot of me saying that. And y'all, no lie, more than one person responded with shit like i can't believe karen i i thought she was better than that da 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 um you know and honestly when i saw that um 
my heart was broken. And um, the truth is it's still broken. Those of you that said those things, I remember exactly who you are because I'm just a petty bitch like that and I can't let it go. Uh, obviously, petty Karen. <laughs> obviously, that doesn't mean that I hate you. I still talk to some of you and I'm still friendly with you. Um, and I, I always will be because I don't think that you did that out of hatred for me or out of malice for me. I think that you did that to protect yourself. So don't come into me and tell me different because this is the only thought that comforts me. You did that <laughs> to protect yourself because you didn't want to get thrown in with the rest of us evil, awful people. Um, I have never once during this whole thing gotten any admission or apology from any of those people. Don't know if I want one because I don't know if I forgive anybody <laughs> is the truth. But holy fuck, that hurt. I go out of my way to help this community, to prop up other role players and other creators and give you all the tools that you need to try to be better. And y'all would throw me under the bus over one fucking screenshot that didn't even say anything. Um, it just really, really shows how aunties don't just hurt their targets and they don't just hurt other aunties, it, they will do shit that pulls in completely regular people. And when you're a normie that doesn't know all of this background stuff, that doesn't understand why people do this, that's not witnessed it before, um, you re what you're doing, whether it's consciously or not, is saying, I have to figure out how to protect myself. And unfortunately, aunties have set up the game that the only way to protect yourself is to say, damn that person. And that's what these people did. Um, and that, yeah, that was, that was my part of it. And at that point, uh, we had to be very strategic. And of course, that's why I helped Sasha build her document to drop the bomb. Um, because I was in it now, whether I wanted to be or not, it was all out on the table. Uh, and you know, it just, yeah, that's it. I mean, that's really what I had to say. Uh, that shit was such bullshit. I didn't do anything. I only ever tried to help Judas. I only ever tried to help Sasha. I tried to help everyone that came to me in that situation. And because I refused to burn the witch, I was punished. Yeah, so, like, what, what Karen is saying is, you know, this this thing that happens to me is, like, really traumatic and really personal, but, like, so many people who are kind and, like, great contributors to, to our small, our small pond, um, get so much shit like you have to understand like at the time that this is happening that all of us suddenly have to be obsessively online because when people are like have you heard this like there is no time for real life to happen anymore like they're not you can't be like well i'm at work or like i'm out i don't know like picking apples or like living my life you you have to be like on your phone on your computer you better be responding to these i had to tell my husband you. about this shit i had to tell my husband someone online thinks i'm a pedophile and i'm having to have conversations about this and i'm sorry yeah yes and you have people who again people like who are range from my friends to like barely know me but don't think that what i've done is wrong and you have their moderators or community members like flooding into their dms demanding to have conversations about these really intense traumatic topics like nobody wants to sit like this is not fun this is not fun for anybody and for people who feel like their life's work or their communities are being threatened like just because they don't want to go along with a witch hunt it is really really stressful for all of us meanwhile and i guess this is what's fucked up because this is just like a good time to these other people like i mean they're stressed out by it they claim they're like oh my god this is just i'm so stressed out by it i'm like whatever you're clearly having some kind of a good time this is making you feel like your life has meaning and purpose and you there was no consideration for us as human beings nobody comes to us and is like you know that you're nobody comes to us and is like 
we want to hear both sides or we want to see the evidence or like, let me show you what I've been shown. I will show you what's being said about you. What do you have to say to these accusations? Yeah, that didn't none happen. of this happens. Nope. None of this, none of this happens. Um, it was instant condemnation. It was inst instant condemnation. And um, to make it super wacky there, um, after this document goes out, it, it causes pretty much everybody to back down. But the, the, the final the final insult is that there are people who, in the face of all of this evidence, um, where Judas is essentially outed as a hypocrite and a liar, there are people who believe them anyways. Not very many, to be clear. It's not very many. It's single digit number of people, but it happens. It's a single digit number. <laughs> it's a single digit number of people, but in the ensuing months, like you know, we we watch as 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 Judas kind of you know tragic because Judas had these like ambitions clearly to be a community leader, and we just annihilate these ambitions. Never, never shall this happen. Um. And but there are other people who um like who, who Judas becomes kind of persona non grata and everybody just kind of a lot of people slowly just kind of are like mm, we don't we don't want to be part of this anymore we see how we got played no nope, apparently everybody was oblivious to the fact that this is a breakup fight and when my screenshots come out and like a part of what I included in this is, is some of Judas and I's like super friendly moments and there people are like ooh. Yeah, and then they start to kind of realize, like, oh, this was a personal friend breakup, and and we should this not have been involved. <clears throat> yeah, this is a personal thing that happened between two people, and one of them filed out of control because they got hurt that they got caught. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, so but anyways, there. We we do observe that there are people who are just like who get all this information, and they're like, I have decided to stand, and it's like. I don't know, like, it, it, it kind of testifies to uh, Judas's manipulative power, but also how desperate people were to cover up their own bad behavior. Because if these people chose to believe me and be like, all right, so Judas did this bad thing, well, then congratulations, now you're kind of bad by association. And people would rather believe lies. People would rather, whatever story Judas told, I'm sure the story was like, this is all made up or out of context or yada yada. People would rather believe blatantly untrue lies then admit that they fucked up nobody for the penny, has apologized for the to us yeah in for the penny yep. in for the pound in for a penny in for the pound and there i think maybe one person in our group has gotten some kind of apology but pretty pretty much nobody nobody at all has been like hey you know what like that was really fun especially not to me Nobody, I, and I, and I doubt that's ever going to happen. So, um, this entire thing happened from July to December of last year. So it like my friendship with Judas is about three months. And then the ensuing fallout is like two and a half to three months. Uh, this is one of the most horrible things that ever happened to me. And I've had cancer. Like I've had a very exciting life. Um, I, I, I say again, I was really lucky to have a friend that stood up for me and to have the ability of uh, thank you discord logs to defend myself. Um, and a lot of people who are in this situation, um, if you are ever kind of targeted by these people, um, your personal relationship to them is often irrelevant and you don't have anything on them. They are just coming from the shadows, like especially on anonymous and just coming and just coming for you. And you have no way of knowing who they are or what they do and defending yourself. So I am. I am very lucky. Um, a lot of people get driven out of their spaces or if there's some kind of public facing artist or creator, you just have to take all of this shit and just try to block it out, which basically means you're being bullied and abused and you can't get away from it, which is, which is traumatic. Um, and even if these people eventually leave you alone, you do rarely get closure. Um, I had so many fantasies about talking to Judas again. Like I, I, um, I knew what their new screen name was. I like, I knew where they were and I just so badly wanted to just be like, why? Like, I still wanted to go back and be like, why did you do this? Why is this happening? Why was this necessary? And what just boggled my mind on a personal level is I wanted to be like, well, what do you really think? Because you've you've 
held these two insanely contradictory opinions. One of them where you literally spend huge amounts of time like being my friend and essentially endorsing everything that I do. And then this reactionary period where I am the devil. So, like, what is the truth? Like, how do you really feel? And um, to be honest, I, I'm pretty sure Judas doesn't actually know the answer to this question. So, like, you can't get an answer from somebody if they don't know. Um, it's it's weird to, to go on living my life knowing this thing is out there. Um, the, yeah, the part of having a horrible gossip campaign about you is you're just like somebody could come back at any time and be like ah the thing i heard about you and the thing and i'm going to like have my ptsd flashback and be like oh yes the thing and then like i just i don't want to have to constantly explain this to people it's and it's you know i, I still have like a shiver of fear whenever i tell somebody new about it because i'm afraid that like i'm going to run across another crazy person like i you know or just, you know, to be more generous, this is just kind of like, I don't know, the reactionary point of like a, a cultural moment, because like for, you know, we've, we're finally acknowledging that, you know, media is impactful and like diversity in media and stuff is important and representation matters, right? Representation matters. And there can be people like completely genuine and sincere people who do not know the background of the anti-movement or its context and who who know simply the phrase representation matters and will hear about the anti-platform in its like most shallow and polished light and be like oh well i, I can i can see how people would would draw those conclusions right if representation matters then m maybe we should you know think about the kinds of content that we put out there and consume it's like on its most shallow level it sounds credible but this means that i am i am terrified of, of talking about this and I come across somebody who believes that and they they find the worst possible interpretation of, of what I tell them and it's terrifying to know that the ants could show up like ants aunties could show up in my house <laughs> but, um, but I, I but I do work really hard at uh, uh, practicing uh, self-compassion now and uh, just another shout out to to Judas who was one of the most aggressive people I have ever met about telling me to be nice to myself like really invested a lot of energy and time into drilling that into my brain um and they were so successful at it that it was a huge part of being able to stand up to them in the first place so just truly we sow the seeds of our own destruction because <laughs> had, had they had they not empowered me so much i might have just you know draw like crawled into a dark hole and disappeared mm -hmm. so there there you go so i guess i, I don't know, like ending comments to like oh because so well, one little bit so i want to address any uh any potential antis out there like and i guess judas i doubt you'll ever listen to this but um yeah i don't think so i'm pretty sure that uh, the judas doesn't follow me anymore or anything like that yeah. <laughs> they they yeah, but, once know, they realized i wasn't gonna take it they uh disappeared from all of my spaces <clears throat> yeah um so if if you're out there and you're just like you're listening to this and you're just like whatever like you clearly do not understand anything about the influence of media and how these things negatively impact trauma victims and perpetuate cycles of abuse first of all just on an academic level i truly genuinely challenge you to essentially construct like an essay on this for me if you can go into google scholar and like and like go and research this stuff which by the way i did at one point because when i'm having my meltdown Thank you, Lunar. i've like Sorry. i want to uh <laughs> argue argue against myself so um like if go out there and really try to prove what you are saying on an academic level instead of simply an emotional level and I'm going to, to let you know that this this essential what you're arguing about the purity of art and consumption has been argued for centuries. Like since monks were transcribing shit in the Middle Ages, this has been argued. And I think if you really took the time to move away from the the deep emotional um aspect of this, if you're truly interested in, on an intellectual level, I think that you will 
you will find that it's it's not what you've been told if you take the time to do that. Um, if you are a person who you're just like, this stuff is just really upsetting to me. It reminds me of like horrible things that happened to me. Please do not spend all of this time associating with and consuming this content, even by extension. You are committing a form of self-harm when you constantly expose yourself to stuff that you know hurts you. You are like, what's more hurtful to you is not that these things exist. It's that you are going out and you are finding these hammers and hitting yourself in the head with them. You have the ability to positively curate spaces that have the things that, that you want or that feel relevant to you. And I know it can be irritating when someone like comes into your fandom or your space and, and it happens to overlap with something that you find gross. But part of dealing with your trauma is that you're going to have to live in public and the living in public means that you're going to come across shit that you don't like and you are going to protect and empower yourself more if you learn how to curate your spaces and and deal with things that upset you than you are if you try if you spend all of your time trying to build a bubble because you're just trying it to hold back the tide you will lose because people are different than you and and weird and complicated and they're going to do things you don't like and they're and your public life where you interact especially around strangers will have these things so first do your research two stop interacting with this stuff that upsets you so much three learn how to deal with things that you encounter in public and four um should I, there they talk about like um aunties or former aunties online have talked about how they start out as world-class haters, but then eventually they like something problematic. Mm -hmm. And God help you. Now you, Always if did. you are, you, yeah, now you are, um, you are one of them. And you're just like, oh shit, if all of my friends find out that now I'm the bad guy, like have, like it's like leaving a cult you're essentially in a cult and now you're questioning the cult and you did the bad thing you did you the bad down. thing and yeah and, and so but the, you just go oh i you just are, i am a bad person and therefore i must hate other people you, harder yeah and you but you're but now the shame has come for you and if you thought that those people deserved all the bad treatment that you gave them you probably are un you know uncomfortably aware of what could happen to you and i'm going to challenge you to um you know what are the 12 step recommendations here like make an honest <laughs> list of of your failures um make direct amends where possible and get out and just change like you can't take back terrible things that you've done but right you can stop doing bad things you can stop hurting other people right now and you can start to become a person that stops hurting other people and you could even become a person who can go back one day and be brave enough to apologize it would like I'm a very forgiving person. It would not, a few things would give me greater pleasure than if somebody came back to me and was like, Sasha, I really thought about what I did and what I did was wrong. And I really am sorry. I'm not necessarily going to be friends with any of those people, but I would be really proud of them to know mm -hmm. that like, that they got something out of this experience where they were able to take it and, and make something positive out of it, out of it too. Because I know I have, I've managed to take positive things out of this. And if the people who hurt me could, learn from it and learn to never do that to somebody else again, then I, I would be happy for them. Mm -hmm. So those, those are my recommendations. If, if in any part of this, you're like, mm, yeah, like I don't, maybe I'm one of those people. What do I, what do I do? There is, it can be different. This could be, you know, we all, we all make mistakes and we do things we're not proud of and you have to live with the choices you've made, but you can start by making different choices now. Yeah, I think that's absolutely true. And what I've seen, at least on Twitter, of a lot of people who are ex antes and end up leaving is they're welcomed with open arms into new communities. Um, I, I, I don't know, obviously, if this has ever happened, but I have never seen it. I've never seen somebody be like, I used to be an auntie. I used to think this stuff. I used to send the death threats to artists. You know, I used to do all these things and um, and I regret it. And I'm and I'm sorry. And and for the person to be shamed for that. Like, I've just, I've not seen it, right? Like, 
I, I think that it would be, you would have to have pretty, it would be pretty high expectations to think that people are going to trust you. They probably won't, but they're not going to eviscerate you. They're not going to take you down. They're probably going to be perfectly nice and normal to you. Um, well, I think also it's important to remember that the opposite side of this anti-movement is restorative justice. Yeah. And you admitting that you were wrong for being a part of a movement that was negative is the starting point of restorative justice yep so like if if people are going people aren't going to react negatively because that's literally the opposite of what they're standing for yep i think that's an important thing to remember mm -hmm. absolutely yeah and and a part of this too is i mean this is we're kind of moving into the next topic but it's like, there's this kind of, I don't know, like I said, I feel like there is a lot of people who are kind of in these movements, like they're, they're people who feel very powerless. I think that's why it includes so many teenagers, because that's a time in your life where you are, you, you're finally kind of feeling like you're a person and you have so little agency. And so like attacking these other people or trying to like curate these spaces to the point of like nuking others feels like a form of agency and power um and it's like you will not change the systemic problems of the world by picking people off like ants they're just like i will dispose of bigotry by killing off the bigots but that's and not that's where fair. bigotry comes from but that's the <laughs> thing is what that's not where bigotry comes from and i know when you're a teenager you don't know that like and so and so that's why i started this out with like nobody reveal who we're talking about nobody go after who we're talking about they don't deserve that because i really truly believe that as much as i might personally have a lot of um negative feelings towards judas in my heart that um that will probably still be there for a while that doesn't mean that they deserve any harm they absolutely don't they they didn't do this like just to be a bad person like that's not how people are people do the things they do because they're trying their best in the system as it exists right and i'm sure that there is there there is like some something in judas's mind that caused them to think this was going to be the right thing and going to help people right like i don't think i don't think that anyone sees themselves as a villain no matter how villainous they act mm -hmm. yeah yep burns but yeah so it's i will destroy bigotry by getting rid of bigots or like the idea that child abuse is perpetuated um by by pedophiles mm -hmm. like I hate, or, I hate to tell this i had to tell you this to your kids but it's a lot about the power differential mm -hmm. like abuse comes from from power differentials and you need to solve broad hierarchical systems of power to end abusive dynamics but that's not as simple or as fun as just nerfing someone on the internet it's not <laughs> <laughs> and that's hard and that's why they do this is because the actual things that would fix it are hard and in some cases like and they're impossible for an individual to do and certainly they're impossible for a, a teenager lifetime. yeah they're fights of a lifetime if we want to live in a different world where the the painful things that happen to us are not repeated we're talking about broad systemic movements that will take decades that we might not even see the fulfillment of right in our lifetime oh. and that it, like you know what they say transformation like you know i'm a shout out to one of my favorite theorists mariam kaba who says transformation she's wonderful. She's wonderful doesn't happen on your personal timeline and i think part of you know again one of the hungers for this this immediate justice is that i can make these things happen on my timeline and you cannot my friend it's so much bigger than you and it's so much bigger than people who draw bad anime art or write bdsm or yaoi or, or all this male, other stuff that... male fan fiction yeah it's... how dare you landon i keep cutting Whatever. you off i feel like you wanted you wanted to make a point no, go ahead okay. oh no it's fine it's the past the point has been made it is past okay <laughs> sorry no, um yeah, you so know like, what? You, you can can't... make one of the Fujoshis that are cringe teenagers. That's fine. You can totally mock me behind my back and call me gross. I yeah, don't but like, don't come into my too. DMs. Don't come into my yeah. DMs and tell me how I'm an evil Fujoshi. You know what I mean? Like, do that with your make friends in your group chat. <laughs> go in, go in your group chat. Go in your, go in your group chat and go. 
yeah, go in your group chat and go wild, right? But don't come to me <laughs> trying to be my friend at the same time. Don't come to me and my DMs telling me these things. Like, I don't want to know. Just go, go have your fun away from me. <clears throat> And don't turn it into cruelty. Like, you can sit there and be like, God, I just hate this particular ship. I find it so stupid. Like, you can do that. You can dislike yeah. people without mm -hmm. making it a moral crusade. It is free to think that people are cringy, weird, or gross without trying to, like, scour them from the face of the earth. You yep. can laugh at people behind their backs. You can work on systemic problems in public and tease people like without ruining their lives i promise you <laughs> you can have it all yep. you can have it all <laughs> i do i mean i have right? the, i have a, i have a group chat right i have a couple group chats and um and that's where the bullshit goes <laughs> that that should not be seeing the light of day right everybody mm -hmm. has these thoughts no matter how good you are and i i talk a lot about like things you should do and you know things that you should think that are going to help you and da, da 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 and all this and i'm here to tell you today that i am not perfect i have those same awful thoughts and I do those same awful things. I just try to do them in private with understanding friends who aren't going to go attack the person that I'm making fun of. You know what I mean? <clears throat> we have, you know, uh, we, have, we have a good time in the dams. We do. <laughs> and you can do that too, and that's not bad. And like, that's not bad. It's private. It's away from the other person. It's whatever, you know? <clears throat> yeah, just like you feel like talking to uh oh, Landon's internet. We're friends. Nee. That, that oh no! Did it come? It did. Off? Please it repeat did. yourself. Go ahead again. Oh, I, I'm so sad. Um, no, what I was just saying was that it, it, just like it happens in real life, you have those friends where you're like, you you invite your two friends, your two closest friends over before the party, and they stay after the party just so you could shit talk everybody who was at the party. That's what happens. And that's, that's fine, so long as <laughs> so long as those friends are also understand that oh, it doesn't leave the group. You know what I mean? Then that's the not group. a problem. Absolutely, and that's part of that's part of friendship dynamics. It's part yeah. of how culture is. Made. And another point I wanted to make a little bit, like a few minutes ago, was um, I think it's also important to remember that art does not directly feed culture. Culture Ooh. is more directly feeding art. Oh, it's complicated, right? It's not a one-to-one -one it is, it relationship. It's co complicated, and it is a touch and go, and there is a little bit in here. But you cannot blame the art that people are making for what is happening in our culture. The art that I think that the, like the base level, the art that people are making is reflective of our culture. Yeah, like that relationship is complicated, right? It's really Absolutely. complicated. It's not one-to-one -one like that. It's not like person makes you know nasty art nasty things happen in real life like that's not that's not the relationship yeah. <laughs> nope. for every is... kylo ren fanfic that is read or written <laughs> a new abusive relationship begins well shit that's how it works it, Sasha, it the, I, wait i have something obviously. to tell you guys i i think i started a few abusive relationships <laughs> oh, damn <laughs> Dang it. Oh, damn, Karen. Oopsies. There's a cat there suffering, and it's all my fault at somewhere in the world because I've written it into fan fiction. Shit. But... You did. You, it is, you, that's what you did. And now, like, that Sarah McLaughlin song, spend all your time waiting. That's, you know, that's, you've, you've made it happen. Yeah, Eric's saying um, music's a good example. Like, I, I agree. There's a lot of there's a lot out there, not with aunties, but there's a lot of um, conservative movements that blame music for like violence, right? Like, oh, it's violent yeah, music. It's going to make you violent. What was it? Rock, rock, rock music or was it punk music? Rock that was music. Satanic? Yeah. Like, rock music is yeah, or rock, 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 music. satanic rock. Yeah. Like, no. <laughs> okay, you, if you if you listen to this music, then you'll start worshiping Satan. Like, that's not how this happens. Yeah, that's not it. That's not how <laughs> that works. You start worshiping Satan because you realize that this is a better person to worship. What? <laughs> but um. <laughs> Yeah, Eminem's M M M's not making you violent, right? The relationship is not one to one like that. No, absolutely. And, and but who can I blame for my choices? Um, only yourself, <laughs> Sasha. Only yourself. <laughs> Aww. Yeah. You product, yeah. You're also Sorry. a product of your nature, so I suppose you could blame culture just a little bit, but only like six percent. <laughs> the ninety four percent else is you. Yeah, thank you. Um, thank you so much, Mochi. Uh, this is a really, really important um, 
topic to me. And and this is this whole anti movement is something that's been going on in fan spaces for a while. It actually hit role, the role play community last. Like it was, it, they went for artists and they went for writers and then they went for role players. But like it's everywhere now. It's everywhere now. So I think it's really really important that all of us that participate in um in like geek culture and in fan culture are aware that this is happening so that we can recognize it sooner and not fall victim and also not fall into these these thought processes and, and think that they have you know anything worthwhile a- anti's anti ideas are not worthwhile they're straight up they're not they are they are straight up like the same video games cause violence ideas applied to shipping that's what it is fiction is not reality yeah it's not and i think that's just what we gotta walk away with yeah <laughs> yep and the and relation the, it's complicated that's happening in fiction does not mean it relates to anything in reality it doesn't i mean it might but it doesn't necessarily it's complicated it, yeah, it doesn't mean it, it it is for a certain it might sure someone could be using writing dark things as a form of therapy or as a form of trying to get their emotions out or oh who knows yeah but it is i'm it's not saying that it's happening in real life just because someone is writing it yep i'm going to i'm gonna, I'm gonna take it one notch spicier than you landed because i mean that's that's one oh. of the one of the arguments and people are like well what if i love <laughs> to do it like let's take it one level spicier which is like if you think that somebody is doing or writing these things online as a vent for their real feelings, what do you think is going to happen when you chase them out of their vent space? Do you oh. think those thoughts are going to disappear? Or do you think that now they are going to take them to offline spaces? Well, shit. like, yeah. So congratulations. You think that you are protecting people. If that's what you really think, like I'm going to stop child abuse by getting rid of the lowly art. I've got really bad news for you. There is an, there is a fair chance that that is the safe vent and you have now killed the vent. So Possibly. where will they go? I mean, if that's uh-huh. your logic, There's... right? Like if that's yeah, your logic, that's your lo- then, the, then that's the natural logic... conclusion is, mm-hmm. you know. <laughs> yeah. Do you want, do you really want to take that chance if that's your yeah. belief? Oh, like, do you, um, so you, ha- you have to accept your own we, premises. We, <clears throat> yeah, yeah. And also we've so, learned over the course of, of several years of being on the internet and, and having real life social dynamics that bullying solves all the problems right? <laughs> is that you are if you are bullied enough and shamed enough into thinking you are something and thinking you are terrible uh then it's obviously going to stop yep um vi has a really good question and i know yes. we're over the over the normal two hours guys but yep. we kind of predicted that this might happen so it is what it is um That's but, but we do want to make sure we we get everything out for this conversation but i really really love vi's question here um is there anything you would have done differently or would do differently in future anti-occurrences um so i will i i now after what i'll answer this and then sasha i would love for you to answer it um mm-hmm. I, I right now recognize this stuff a lot sooner. Like I had aunties before come to me, but it was always anonymous aunties on Tumblr, right? Like I never had anyone tie their screen name to it. So it was very, very easy for me to like just delete it and be whatever, right? Like I never had someone put their face on it. So that was my experience previously. After this experience, I now take no shit. You give me those kinds of arguments um, very early on in the conversation, I will talk to you about why that's so wrong. And if you are not, you know, commiserate to that, like if you are not interested in having that conversation, if you just want to beat me down about it, um, blocked, deleted, move on. I don't got time for that. I'm a busy person. And that's what I would have done differently. That first conversation I had with Judas, I would have said, this is unreasonable. What the fuck? You know, I would not have been so nice and so assuming that they would just drop it. That's what I would have done differently. So. And, um, and, yeah, okay, so, yeah, okay, so, uh, my answer, um, what could, what would I have done differently? Um, this is tough, because, like I said, I overall take this as a good experience. Um, you did it, Judas, you forced me to deal with my deepest, darkest shame, you saved me 10 years of therapy. It was the worst, it was exposure therapy of the worst kind, but can, you did it! You did it, buddy! <laughs> it worked! <laughs> it, it worked! It worked. I mean, I really have, like I said, my friends to thank for that, but um, complete backfire as far as that goes. 
Um, one thing that Karen, Karen and I did, did review is that I just go, I reveal a lot really fast. Oh yeah. We did um, talk about that. This, this relationship moves really quickly. And one of the things that Karen kind of discussed is that Judas also kind of tries to cozy up to Karen, but Karen being much more well-adjusted than me doesn't bite. They're like Judas had this knack for saying whatever you wanted to hear. Karen detects this. Yeah, I did. And, and I was like, eh. <laughs> yeah, Karen's not about it. Karen is not about um, the, the ass kissing. Whereas I, in my more emotionally vulnerable position, definitely go for it. So one thing I would I would do differently or one thing I'm kind of more cautious about now is if I feel a really strong, intense connection with somebody right away, I do not necessarily um, respond to that emotion. I'm like, hmm, okay, I, you know, I, which by the way, I actually meet somebody who's very reminiscent of Judas in real life and trip just fall down the hill and it, it's much less bad, but just people who tell me I'm great really fast. What can I say? I'm kind of a sucker. But um, <laughs> It's intoxicating things... though, right? Isn't it? it it's is. intoxicating. It is. Oh, you're just, you're so great and you're so wonderful. We just have these so much in common. But, you know, now nowadays I am much more like <sighs> I'm, I'm just, I, I accept that if you're going to build a, a strong connection with somebody, that it takes time that if you like things can feel good when they're quick and intense but just it is you just have to kind of be a little bit guarded with your heart especially especially if it's something that's really personal or, or sensitive to you it's okay for you to kind of giggle and bond in the beginning karen kind of talked about this on her last stream with like um you know like problematic ships and stuff like it's okay to be guarded with people and to take things slow and if people are coming at you really hard and really fast um, right away, like as intoxicating as it is, it's like, you know, at the Christmas party, it's like have no more than two drinks at the Christmas party. This is kind of the deal. You can, you can share some stuff kind of hard and fast, but, um, in the future, I just don't go for things as hard and as fast this way. I, I wait to establish relationships with people longer. I am a little more cautious. Um, for the future, it's a lot like what Karen said. I was filled with a lot of self-doubt and shame. And like Karen, I humored. I humored arguments and discussions that I now realize either seeded ground to the opposition or were really just manifestations of my own shame. Mm -hmm. And no more so ground now, seated. <clears throat> no more ground seated. I will not open the door to these kinds of arguments. Um, if I see them coming at all in any incarnation, I just I just nail them right away. I'm like, let me explain why the thing that you're proposing goes down this really destructive and counterintuitive road. And so, um, and I'm and I'm learning to be more public about it. Like part of what's difficult about this is as said, like I do not want to hit the hornet's nest. Like I am not trying to antagonize a bunch of angry teenagers to come after me. Um, but at the same time, the opinions that I state in public and what I choose to defend and advocate for in public makes a difference to the silent audience. The people that see me make these arguments or see me defend these things are going to potentially rethink what they do, what they write, how they treat other people. I may be persuading people who I've never even spoken to. They might just hang out on my server or it's like one person who listens to this VOD hears about it and learns about this and and reconsiders and if i am too afraid to take a stance if i'm so scared of hitting the hornet's nest that i allow these things to proceed um uninterrupted or unintercepted like i you know i don't I, i'm not going to say i'm contributing but there's a chance that i can throw down some tire spikes or a speed bump if i can get some people to hesitate in either doing these things or supporting them, I feel like I can contribute to there being less harm in the world. Mm -hmm. So instead, and you know, when I first had these, are when I first like, oh God, Judas and I actually discussed some of these topics in the abstract in public, and I seeded intellectual ground. 
and I may have negatively influenced people by seeding that ground. And I will not do that anymore, even if I am nervous and afraid. Yeah. I mean, you were trying to be nice to her, though. At least that's how I read it at the time when I was like reading yeah, these conversations. Of like, you were like, like, oh, well, you know, Sasha and Judas, they're, they're close friends. So, of course, Sasha's saying, saying these things. She's trying to be gentle, you know. <laughs> um, but who knows how it appeared to someone who sided more with Judas's point of view. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, Eric, yeah, that, um, that Eric, I want to, I want to, I want to respond really quickly to what you're saying. I know that this feedback and what you guys might want to do instead um, means that you might be a little bit slower on genuinely good relationships. Um, but I do think that it's worth it, right? Like, if someone's, if someone is genuine and they're reaching out to you because they really do want advice they really do want to form a friendship they're not just being you know weird aunties and going to use it against you later right um you know they're going to be patient with you so like i i don't i don't want anyone to feel discouraged from trying to make friends online that is not the point the point is is if is maybe three months is not long enough to be telling someone your deepest darkest most shameful secrets that's the point Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I know that ruins the fun. Yeah. Guys, <laughs> really... strangers on the internet. Yeah, stranger danger. <laughs> stranger, yeah, that's the thing. Stranger danger. I think that there is something also here that um that I that you were kind of hinting at, Sasha. Obviously not having been involved first handedly in this convers in this situation and not really have experienced antis going Oh yeah, I forgot to say individually. I forgot to say when I was pulled into all this because I got scared, I went around and showed the evidence to literally all of my friends and mods and be like, hey, if this person comes for me, here's all here's all the stuff. So that's how Landon knew, saw, saw everything and knew. Yeah. <laughs> I and totally I forgot to say that. And like I said earlier in the like I said earlier in the stream, like I, I read it and I was just like, I have no fucking idea what's happening. <laughs> what? Does yeah, prove? and it's and I shared it like, because I was no. scared. I was like, if this person comes for me oh. hard, I don't know what I'm gonna do. So I sent I, I showed it to like everybody that it was yeah, that was moderating was, my communities and she like she was she prepped me with as much with with not that much context but a much context as i probably needed at the time mm-hmm. and i knew of sasha i sasha and i had not been writing together at that point and i did not know judas at all and i was just reading these screenshots and me being me who like obviously has learned from karen a lot and has formed my own opinions that fiction is fiction and 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 separate from reality and like you do you and has written really really dark stuff i was reading these like broken screenshots just being like i don't understand how this is what is happening why is karen so worried she's very worried i'm not going to critique it or ask her because she's very worried but in my head i'm just like what the fuck is happening <laughs> it's so yes. comforting okay. to it's so comforting to know you thought it was such a non-issue i i feel like i have taught you well <laughs> Yeah, um, no, it's bonkers. I think going into it, if a situation ever did happen like this again, from from the way you've been talking about it, Sasha, you've also embraced the shame, which of course will not save everything or doesn't mean it won't come back. That you had this thing that you thought was ants in a cupboard and is now something that you are not sharing with the world but has certainly embraced and, and does no longer make you feel like a bad person. Yeah, I mean, it's, I think that that is power when it comes to when mm-hmm. people start questioning it. It will not solve anything, especially if the world is crumbling around you, but it at least lets you have another leg to stand on. Yep. Ab- a- absolutely. Landon, that again, like great ironies about this experience is that it's it's meant to be this like world ending destructive moment that drives me out of this space and crushes my community. Like that is the goal here. These people are settling for like nothing less than my annihilation. Yeah, they, the they want irony, Sasha gone from the internet. Like that is the goal. That was it. It was to get me completely off of the internet and like crush my space. And the the irony of it is, is that like, I had, like when this happened, I remember thinking about it and I was like, I have two choices. I can either give in, I can like, if I can essentially agree to their premise that I am a terrible person of some sort and I can leave and I can give in to these shame feelings that are eating me alive. Or if I stay, 
if I choose to stay, I have no choice but to wholly reject their premise. It was like, I don't generally believe in a lot of binaristic choices, but like that was it. It was either you need to run into the burning building or you need to run into the woods and never come out again. So I was like, into the burning building we go. And so after you go through something like this, you, you, you like that, that's it. Like I can't. I can't back down anymore. Mm -hmm. I don't have, like, I my my leg just like I I had to process these feelings and deal with them, so I'm not so intensely triggered by these kinds of conversations or confrontations. Yeah. And and I and that's good. Yeah, yeah but it, 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 let's that, acknowledge um... that it took a year. It took like a year to get there, right? To be comfortable to talk about this. Yeah, yeah, like in in the be like so like it kind of starts like in the beginning. I'm only like I wouldn't even reference these things. I would not even allude to Judas's existence in any space. Uh, you would run. You would like to run into the burning building. I do not recommend this experience. By the way, as productive as it is for as it was for me, it was it was tra it was traumatic. So it took up a lot of time. Not... It was a huge in a lot of ways. It was a huge time waster. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it probably yeah, but, uh, like Sasha said earlier, it was ten years of therapy, but in three months. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like it probably took the same amount of time as it would have been weekly therapy sessions of the course of 10 years <laughs> but it just how happened to happen in three months <laughs> you're you're right so like every day i had to do like x amount of therapy and unlike in regular therapy where you get like you know a nice break between sessions i'm just going in there every day um other what other things oh so um let's see the the riot slash group mentality i think Ken already mentioned like people are just kind of doing this to protect themselves yeah but the other thing is, is like, if you're a person, you're listening to this, you're kind of on the fence. You're like, well, I haven't seen this. This hasn't affected me or my community. I'm more of a vanilla writer slash vanilla consumer. Please realize that the, the bystander effect slash intervention is so important. When these things are gaining traction, it can be quite meaningful for you to be like, hey, like, I'd like to see some receipts on this. Or, like, um, remember the belief survivors thing that I mentioned? There's, like, these these earlier ideas, like, media representation matters and belief survivors that earlier were big, like, social justice discussions. Um, like, I'm not saying, I think, because part of, I think, why Judas is so embraced is because that idea, belief survivors, goes haywire. Nobody mm -hmm. asks for receipts. Nobody asks for context. Nobody goes and like asks the person involved. And yes, there are situations where like, you know, like I, anonymous accusations can have meaning, but like you like to believe in due process or to believe in any kind of justice or any kind of social transformation, you do have to actually take the time to gather evidence and hear things out and process and acknowledge like you like I, I know there's this desire to like protect yourself and to immediately jump on the bandwagon and virtue signal by being like I believe all survivors I heard this one person say this thing and of course I support you and I love you and yada yada but like and it, there's that need to share instantly and validate instantly but in these high stakes hardcore situations it is vital to take a moment to investigate to gather receipts, to gather information, to hear things out. People who have caused serious harm, there will be receipts, there will be stories. Mm -hmm. Sooner or later, there is going to be somebody who can, like, um, there will be screenshots, there will be multiple victims, there will be something mm -hmm. that that lends credibility. There will be. Yes, there will. <clears throat> there will be. There will be things that lend credibility to this, and it does not hurt to take the time to be like. I would like to hear more about this or like um mm -hmm. i've had to do i've very rarely had to ban people but in the cases that i have or when someone has reported something to me i have gone into dms with these people accused of whatever and i'm like here's the evidence that has been brought against you here's the information that i have what do you have to say for yourself and every time it's happened i have not necessarily had the person be like i didn't do this they don't prove that they're innocent but they have an opportunity to explain their behavior to me to contextualize it and for me to have a conversation about like 
this is what you did wrong. This is why it's wrong. This is the consequence that I now have to apply. So this person has some context for what's happening because if I just like kick people and shadow ban people and like, oh, I believe in a, a blacklist where I just evict people based on something I heard or something that he did somewhere else, then I'm not, I'm also not contributing to a world where people can change. If someone doesn't know what they've done wrong, if they've had no opportunity to explain themselves, there can be no accountability. Yep. They have to at least get be given the opportunity to understand. People aren't psychic. <clears throat> um, yeah. What are you going to say, Landon? Yeah, go ahead, Landon. Oh, no, 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 it's totally fine. Um, I was just... I don't know, even anymore. I, I think that, Sasha, you pulled it together so much. I think yeah. it's just important to remember that people are human on the internet. Like, that's the other thing, too, on all of this, is that do not get do not just believe everything that you hear do your own research and understand that on the other side of the screen is a living breathing human being that you know nothing about even if they, you think they're your closest friend yeah yep. and i think that brings us to the last point which is which i mentioned which is that like if you're cheesed off about this fictional content and media representation and one oh guys got a comment over there but yes on the one more thing real quick it's that if you are going out and you are hurting and bullying and abusing real people over fictional content, I really challenge you to interrogate your values because these people that you are sending death threats to are real people. There are people who have ended their lives over um, accusations that have come out against them and people have dogpiled on them. And, or like, I don't believe, I also don't believe in social media shaming. Like, I don't believe in people, like, losing their jobs and their livelihoods um, to people who have done real wrong being so terrified and, like, permanently ruined because that's not restorative either. That's not the kind of world I want to live in. Mm -mm. I don't want any of us to live in a world where we make bad choices and that's it. We are disposable and worthless. It's not the kind of world that I want to live in. And if, and if you are terrorizing real people and causing real people real psychological harm over fiction do you really care about real people because it, it's clear that some people to you are disposable and how different are you from the people you claim to criticize because uh, you know isn't abuse about the people who are thought to be disposable you may have more in common with the people that you claim to hate then you realize and i would yeah. challenge you to consider that and was by what's so interesting the paradox of intolerance yes we need to believe the survivor but yeah there are two exactly that that is what happens media representation matters and we do need to believe the survivor but we need to have complex nuanced conversations about what it means for media representation to matter and i hate to say this but sometimes people lie like yeah, and I sometimes think, people what I think abuse they lie because they're human and humans are liars so just on, a large, on the large scale i think that this this witch burning era that we are currently in and have gone through in the last few years has been good for us because we are now calling out injustice where we weren't to the extent that we were before however it now needs to transform and there needs to be the, those nuances to come into it to realize that not everyone tells the truth not everything is as it seems and that we need to have conversations about it yep and do your own research believe the survivor but off for me I, I i also think you can you can believe a survivor and still ask for more information right and there's a difference between like your friend coming to you and being like this horrible thing happened to me and the conversation you have with them versus someone you only tangently know Right. Like if yeah. you're not that close to someone and they're coming to you telling you about how someone else abused them, it's kind of like, why are you telling me? Like, that's what you should be thinking and, and be digging a little bit more into. Like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry that happened. Do you do you know, do you have any proof? Like, do you have anything that shows that so that you can, like, do something about it? You know, that kind of tactic me, is can helpful. Can you tell me more? Yeah. You can, you, can, you can validate someone's emotions. And I guess this is a kind of a tragedy for Judas as well, because like in the wake of this breakup they're they are clearly scared that i am not I, that i'm going to renege on my half of the deal right they think that or at least in the beginning they think that i am going to try and beat them to the punch of of the shame train because that's and they're what scared they 
mm -hmm. and they're sad yeah and, and which what's wild is that like this situation progresses to the point where it becomes clear i'm not going to do that <laughs> but anyways um nobody so like nobody actually sat there and listened to Jews and was like hey i i hear that you're hurting and i hear that you're scared it sounds like this was like an intense relationship for you it sounds like a lot was going on can you kind of tell me more about it can you kind of you know this screenshot you know it, it feels like this was part of a bigger conversation can you tell me about that like nobody like judas has been from what i know who knows what is true and what's not but has had a rough life and did need some kind of emotional support that also didn't enable their bad behavior and yeah. you can support somebody telling you something like sad and upsetting and intense and still be like, like, I'm really sorry to hear that. Can you tell me more? Like, I, I hear that you're scared and you're hurting and you can hold space for those feelings without being like, yeah, let's go get them because clearly it's all bad. And like, if, I don't know if Judas had had people who had maybe held that space and maybe been like, Hey, like, it sounds like this was really upsetting for you, but maybe the answer isn't to to go to wage this war because ultimately it hurts judas a lot in the mm -hmm. end they yeah. they are they are they are toasted their credibility is very damaged and mm -hmm. you know this could always come back to haunt them which is a sad thing to happen to anybody and, and i'm sad like that day. nobody stopped them yeah and they also lost a friend like they lost many friends obviously they were not a good friend to you but that's mm -hmm. the other thing too, is that they lost a friend and they also had to go through this morning. And that, I mean, and that's just, that's just part of it as well is that they really have lost in this situation. They yeah. lost a community, they lost reputa reputation, they lost, um, they lost a friend, they lost several friends. Mm -hmm. And this is because of something that they just decided to do. The decision that they decided to make and a war that they decided to wage that had no proof behind it. And yeah. that is something that we can feel empathetic for, for mm -hmm. Judas. Yeah, but it's really sad. But time, like, sit there and be like, it doesn't mean that you don't get to be mad or yep. angry or yeah. want an apology. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. I can be mad and want an apology and want accountability. And I can also look and be just like, damn. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Oh, because yeah. they didn't. They didn't come out of this good, right? They didn't come out of this good. They sure, they lost they the breakup sure. game. Like, yeah. <laughs> as far as breakup games go, Judas lost. Yep. Big time. Big yep. time. All right. Um, we've gone way over, but I think we made all yeah. the points that we wanted to make. Is there anything else that you guys wanted to say, or or in the chat, anything else you guys wanted to ask or know more about? I just um, want to say thank you again, Sasha, for sharing your story. I know it's a lot to unpack. I, I know that it's, you were saying in itself, it was like flashing back a little bit. And I appreciate that you are willing to pass this on yeah. and tell people. And so thank you for that. 100%. Oh, thank, thank you for uh, for giving me a platform to to tell my story. Um, like, I, like I said on the, on the Believe Survivors thing, I have always been a, a fan of... Um, of believe survivors and of people like sharing their truths and as you mentioned like you know we're finally starting to become a lot more critical of mass culture and i think a really sad thing for me was um the disillusionment that i went through in this case because you know i w i was always a person who was like believe survivors and support them and to be on the receiving end of a liar of someone who was using believe survivors in this incredibly damaging fashion like the you you know it's like the horror story it's like the fake rape accusation and you're and that you experience and you're just like oh my god like i like what do i do because then you're like oh my god i have to be the person to say that i have to be the person to say that this is like a fake survivor and that was brutal for me that was devastating and very ugly political complexity um but that's life like the <laughs> life is difficult and complex and and nuanced and the reason i tell this story is like i said hopefully if anybody hears it on any side and opts to make the world a less cruel place then it will have been it will have been worth it yeah well, thank you thank you very much eric i appreciate that 
Yeah, no, I agree. Um, and that's really all I would want to end with too is is to say thank you for sharing. Um, do we do we want to do a final article or, or anything? Did I you have, did you do one I or? Have. Yeah, so I have some picked out. I was going to make you guys choose between um, good feels or objectifying men. Um, objectifying men! <laughs> oh, let's do objectifying right. men. <laughs> um, let's let's generalize about men. I about was, men! <laughs> I was looking at this and I I am a little unhappy with the lack of diversity in, this, in these pictures. However... Okay, I'm pulling it up. I just got to switch back over to my desktop. Okay. Uh, oh, yes, okay. men are okay. Okay, yeah. so am I picking my favorite one? <laughs> you can. Um, I just wanted to share this because it's hot firefighters with cute animals. Although that, okay. Although that kangaroo does not look thrilled about being in this situation that it's in. <laughs> well, let's let's see, let's see here. Hmm. Oh, look at that! <laughs> okay, so top top two. Are, yes. It's the one with the little <gasps> ducklings sitting on the man versus yes. the, the man who is putting his face against the horse. Man oh, with his face wanted... against the ho the horse. It like it it takes me back to being in like the fourth grade and yeah. horses were such perfect magical creatures. We have like man with abs and like horse. I My agree. My brain is like. This is it. Am, this is the I top one. Like, yeah, top. the best. Oh uh, my god, he looks. He I looks also, so nice. I love this picture. I also enjoy the guy laying down with some sort of porcupine. Oh, it's an echidna. An echidna. Uh, this guy. First of all, the man's eyes is yeah. amazing, and also like that's a Pokemon. <laughs> So, like, that also is a well, Australia is the land of the Pokemon, so. That is true. <laughs> so, yeah, so man cuddling up the horse, just looking so happy to be, like, petting this horse, and this horse being so in love with this man, and then the man laying down with the echidna on his shoulder. Yeah, Um. so funny story, I, I went to Australia and New Zealand when I was in, I think it was middle school or high school, I can't remember now what exactly a year it was, but it was like a student exchange program, and we did this activity where you like go to one of these koala preserves and you like hold the koala and cuddle with it. Those things, like all they do is sleep all the time, so literally like the koala just lays on you and sleeps. Like it is the most, it was the most like docile animal That's experience wonderful. I've ever had. I love that. Oh, yeah. I love it. This one's the best, though. This one with the horse. And the horse looks so happy to get cuddled. <laughs> and the man looks so happy to be cuddling it. Like, this is the best. Yep. Yes. <laughs> Good <Hi>. article. <laughs> You're welcome. Good article. Okay, let's switch to webcam only and do our little ending. Um, so uh, let's, let's let Sasha go first. Um, Sasha, is there any, anything that you would like to plug or places where people can find you that you would like to shout out? Come join my problematic circle of friends. If you too are problematic, please come to barbermonger.me and join our Discord server where I post lots of random deep thoughts. If you like any of this stuff that I talked about, if you like to contemplate online dynamics, social justice, transformative justice, prison abolition, police reform, media representation, if you thought any of this was a good time, Great news. I have a server where it, me and six other people talk about it. Mm -hmm. There's like, you know, there's like 500, there's like 500 members in my server and there are eight people that talk. So if you would like <laughs> well, because to... most of the people just come for the ads, right? Like they just post their RP ad and then they, they leave. <laughs> yeah. But um, just as an, I guess as an aside, I used to have a blog on Barber Monger after I had this really bad breakup. And the amount of views that I got on that blog is like, slightly disturbing and uncanny like who was read like i mean like over ten thousand views like over a period of time who was reading this i like clearly people i've never talked to <laughs> so i just i could do kind of generally assume that i must say things online and people are just like huh yes but if you want to be one of those people barbermonger.me i am a a role play hub administrator um and i have lots of opinions on these things you can come hang out with me and hear about my life adventures and thoughts and i i welcome you 
links in the chat. So yeah, if you're looking for a, a role, and I would actually say this is a pretty good website. If you're looking for one-on-one -on -one role play and you, you want to try to find like other adults who have been role playing for a, a really long time, that's the audience that's on Barber Monger. So if you're looking for that, um, it's a really great website to post your ad. Um, Landon, yes. where can people find you? You can find me on my Instagram if you want pictures of fall. That's what is happening right now. It's land in Maine. Um, you get to see this beautiful face, which, you know, you don't know exists because I'm background voice. But I do exist. So you can find me on there. Uh, you can find me at the same at handle on Twitter if you want to watch me stan over. Um, <laughs> it's Karen Terry and Halsey. <laughs> and then um, Halsey. Oh my God, my future <laughs> wife. Uh, <laughs> she doesn't know it yet, though. She everybody, know. the theme song. Every everybody can go play the song "I'm Not Mad" by Halsey, and you can experience my emotions <laughs> one year after <laughs> this event. There we go. Perfect. Okay. Um, where you um, can find? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, I was going to say that's where you can find me. Yep, where you can find me is right here on this channel. So if you are watching and you're enjoying this, click follow down below. Um, we stream on Saturdays, Interstage Window. That's like my conversation with friends type of stream. Usually Landon is here as my moderator. And sometimes we also have guests, just like Sasha today. Uh, I also stream on Thursday evenings. I start around 6.30ish. It depends on when I finish dinner. And um, that's kind of like a hodgepodge of whatever the hell I feel like streaming. So come there for a good time. Uh, and then I have my YouTube show on YouTube. Oh, this is all linked down below. You can find my YouTube channel down below. Uh, Spare Room, that's the show that goes up on YouTube. It goes up on 2 p.m. every Wednesday. That's a scripted show that's basically role play, help, and inspiration. Um, and then the other place that I actually post content is my Twitter. Also down below, my Twitter is It's Karen Terry. Uh, you can find me there. Uh, mostly it's advertising, but sometimes there's hot takes. So, uh, so mm -hmm. yeah, that's all the places. And if you really liked this and would like to be involved in any future shows, you want to join the Discord because that's where you keep up to date on the Interstage Window shows. And um, basically the main way that you can end up coming on the show is basically coming on here, participating in the chat live and also being part of the discord. Those two things. Um, that's it. That's all. That's all my things. Anything else guys, before we close out the stream? Uh, nope. Just don't forget to be awesome. Yeah. Make it a great day guys. Make it a great day. Um, make it a really be great kind. day after this one. Yeah. Let's do that. Okay. Bye. Bye everybody. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you.